Portland, Pennsylvania. Hello there. Welcome to TalkNet. Hi, Bruce. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. Uh, Bruce, I have uh, about two or three questions to throw at you. I'm looking to get into uh, a small engine repair business. Uh, small engine? Yes. You mean like lawnmower engines, that kind of stuff? Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I'm looking at this building uh, to lease it. Mm -hmm. Okay. How much? 295 a, a month. Well, that doesn't sound unreasonable. Okay. Now, the owner wants me to fix the floor, put double doors in, and fix the roof at my expense. Well, well, fix the floor. Let's separate these little ingredients out. What's that involve? Okay. A whole new floor. What's wrong with the floor? What is it, poured concrete? No, it's wood. Whew, that's big money. Yes, sir. And uh, the roof leaks a little bit. So. Uh, that, that is a flat roof? I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Forget that, Charlie. That's I big so. money. Flat, yeah. When a flat roof leaks, for all intents and purposes, you got to put a new roof on. Uh -huh. I mean, it just you patch one, two more leaks pop up. They're, they're just they're a pain. They're really a first-class industrial strength pain. Yeah. And you said the doors. I mean, uh, you, you, you're, you're just starting out in business, right? Yes. You can't afford to do all that. Well, that's it's, it's a very very costly and expensive deal there. Right, but for, and, and it's his building. Yes. For what purpose, nah? I mean, the you, one you are not in, in exactly in a, in, a, in, a, in a big metropolis. How much do they want to square? How big is this building? He don't know the exact uh, measurements of the building, but well, uh, to guess, make, guess it out to me. Okay, I would say it's a, it's about um, maybe thirty by thirty. Thirty square. Yeah. Nine hundred square feet. And they, and they want to charge you 3600 bucks a year. Uh-huh. $4 a square foot. In your area, you should be able to find four for four or five bucks. You should be able to find uh, a building that you don't have to put any money into. Yeah, that, that's what I figured. Bruce, you think I'd be better off maybe to just buy a home and put the business right in my home? Well, the problem with that scenario is that you're, in all likelihood, how's the zoning in your part of the world? Pretty well, loose? Is it loose, sir? Yeah, well, where I'm at now, I was turned down for the zoning. Well, that's what I'm getting to. If you bought a house, the chances are it's in a residential area, and they wouldn't let you do it. Yeah. I would have to go into uh, probably a business or that's right. commercial. That's right. just seems to me, you're not, as I said, you're not in the high-rent district out there. No. You should be able to find yourself an appropriate building. How about a, a, an old gas station that went out of business? There's a lot of those floating around these days. Yes, but the problem is... They want like three hundred thousand dollars on up for an, for the one that's out of business. Yeah, yeah. The buildings where I'm looking at is very very expensive. Well, and look elsewhere. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to do that. I would not sink a lot of dough in somebody else's building at this intersection. Okay. I do wish you well, kid. Thank you very much. Knock him dead, my friend. Bye bye. Dallas, Texas. Hello there. Welcome to Talk Net. Hi, Bruce. Hi. I need your sage advice on something. Sage advice? Sage. I am looking, well, I'll back up a minute. I need a part-time job, a moonlighting job. Mm -hmm. The company that I worked for, when we uh, went to work, we had to sign an agreement that we would not do that. Why? We are involved in a company that we have a, a high public exposure. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, let's see, without mentioning any names. I work for a flooring company, and occasionally we have to go out and make a determination as whether floor products are defective or are not defective. Yeah. And uh, the company doesn't want you going out and saying, okay, somebody's floor is defective, and then maybe that afternoon that person sees you slinging hamburgers or something like that. Oh, for crying out loud. But, well, this is 19th century kind of stuff. Well, that's... that's you know, the way the company feels, too. Oh, so you wear a mustache and a wig. <laughs> Gee, what a lot of garbage. So, you know, that, that kind of precludes, uh, you know, like you did driving a cab or like say, uh, working in the hamburger place. I don't really think it does, to tell you the truth. Who's going to recognize you? Uh, I really don't know. So I you think it's, such a, I think it's absurd that this is it, that, that there's something demeaning about driving a cab or slinging hamburgers? Not that at you're, all. That you're, that I'm, I'm talking about, and I, I know oh. you don't feel that way from your dumb Not company's point of view, that you are, your credentials have been diminished in, in some way because uh, you you had the ambition to do something else? That's the official thinking of the company. Well, yes. I would love to debate that with some of, in front of an audience. 
I would, wouldn't I love to have with them some of those a character like that come to one of our presentations? I, 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 would, I would invite him up on the stage, get him a plush chair, and the best microphone I could find. What a stupid attitude. So, uh, so your advice is what? Just go ahead. I go look for a job. I go look for. I, I, I have a. I, I, and I don't know. How much do you earn a year? Uh, thirty-five thousand. I, mean, I, I just, I, I just would love to see a lawsuit based upon that kind of a, of a presumption. You see, it'd be one thing if they said they don't want you laying flooring. I can understand that, mm -hmm. because you'd be in competition with, and you could be prejudiced and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But to, to go out and say that uh, you have diminished your status by honest work, I'd like to see how far that would go in a court of law. Okay. Well, I but, appreciate your advice. I say, yeah, look. Uh, if you have to, you wear a. If, you, if you're really that concerned, who's gonna? If you, you'd be amazed at just how much a, 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 a wig or a, or a mustache or, or will do, unless you have a mustache already. You don't have a How much that'll change your appearance? Well, it's certainly something see, to think about. I mean, I, I hate like the. Uh, frankly, it, it sticks in my throat to even to suggest you have to do that kind of nonsense. To, to, to say there's something demeaning about honest work is just so totally foreign. To my my point of view, that it, it makes me ill. I would personally would I go for it oh, in a in a New York instant. I wish you well, my friend. Thanks a lot. Talk about 19th century thinking. I'm Bruce Williams. This is Talknet. <laughs> Seattle, Washington. Hello there. Hi, Bruce. Hi. Very nice to talk to you, sir. It's a real pleasure. What can I do for you? Well, my wife and I own a piece of uh, rental property, and we're having trouble weighing the pros and cons of whether we should hold on to it. Well, that's not too hard to do, really. There's just this, you throw a few equations together, and it pretty much tells you. Okay. So let's let's discuss it for a minute, shall we? Okay. How much uh, is the property worth? It's worth ninety thousand. All right. How much do you owe on it? About. Forty-five. All right. So you got a fifty percent equity. Right. What does it rent for? Five seventy-five a month. <laughs> Party's over. That's it, huh? Party's over. Sell it. You bet. Okay. It's just not enough. <laughs> it's that simple. Oh, well, see, let's you, you, take a look at it. I mean, well, what? Let's call it six hundred. It's an easy number for me to do in my head. All right. That's okay. seventy-two hundred a year. Before taxes. Debt service, the whole works, right? Right. Nothing left. Okay. We, the positive cash flow, we pay about four hundred a month with the mortgage, right. Go ahead. taxes, and insurance. Yeah. So, yeah. so it is thrown off about two hundred a month. Would you lend me forty-five thousand dollars for twenty-four hundred bucks a year? No. Well, that's what you're doing. Okay. How about uh, appreciation? How, 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 that, how do you factor that in? How much place? is it? Well, right now, how much is it more? Is it going to appreciate? Well, it's uh, it's one of the lowest priced houses in the neighborhood. It's uh, it's it's an urban neighborhood, which which is attractive in this area because it's so close to downtown, and we're having a lot of traffic problems. Mm -hmm. And it's appreciating at about five percent a year, I would All say. All right, so let, let's assume it's at five percent. That's five thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. A year. So now we've got uh, seventy-seven hundred bucks. And the $5,000 is going to be taxed under a current schedule of 28%. Is that also correct? One sooner or later when you collect it. Yeah. So the 5000 is not really 5000 anymore. It's 5000 reduced by 30% or there. Okay. Doesn't look like to me it's a very good deal. Okay. So. No. But you took that, let's suppose you took that $45,000. Mm -hmm. And you went out and bought yourself, uh, oh, let me see, four nine. Let's, we'll say 20000 would buy you a hundred. You could buy at least two hundred thousand dollars worth of new real estate with that forty-five thousand down, couldn't you? Yes. I, well, well yeah. if, if we could uh, get the financing for it, sure. Is there any reason why you couldn't? Well, no. I, it, it, that'd be a, a lot to carry on our on our current salary. Well, wait a while. We're talking about income property. Mm-hmm. It, it just seems like. No, wait a uh, minute. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Might get to. Don't 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 let me get sidetracked. Okay. I don't mean to be rude. If you 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 are. First of all, any time you have that much equity in a, in a piece of rental property, you're in trouble. Okay. Because you're not leveraging properly. Gotcha. You could go out and double your investment of two hundred grand to two hundred grand, right? Mm -hmm. Let's assume that the the the, the, the uh, appreciation was the same for the same investment that you have now. Now you got ten thousand dollars of of appreciation versus five. 
the, the problem is you have a real tough time finding real estate that will give you a positive cash flow out here. Anywhere today. Right. Anywhere. And is, is it, what's your feeling on you don't have, But you don't have a positive cash flow. Okay, I, I, you, if I, I put fifty in the equity, I if see. I put fifty percent down, I get all the positive cash flow deals I want. So can you? Right. So you're kidding yourself in that regard. Okay. What about uh, if we did plug some of that money back into real estate and uh, and weren't even breaking even with uh, the rent we were pulling in? Is uh, no, you, do you see that as being a good investment? No. Okay. And I'm and I'll tell you straight out. That I just got myself involved in a deal, I'm going to have a negative cash flow. I'm not very happy about it. Mm -hmm. But I made the deal 18 months ago on a pre construction. Okay. And the real estate market has made some very, very unfortunate moves in that 18 months, hasn't it? Right. So I'm, 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 the, I'm the victim of that right now. Uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Is, is real estate not a great investment? Oh, it's a, it's, it's a much, much trickier investment than it was three or four or five years ago. Mm hmm. Uh, and, and one of the factors is what is your total income? You know, if you make over 150 grand a year today, mm -hmm. they, they've totally they've made it miserable for you. Right. Because it's just there's virtually no tax benefit if your if your income exceeds 150. If it's under 25, there are still some decent tax benefits. So oh. it depends on where you are. The the more money you make, the less the benefits are. Okay. Keep that in mind. And I, well, you, 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 you can't make a move today without the tax, uh, the, your tax authority sitting ready to your elbow. Well, that's for sure. I, uh, I know that we would have to pay capital gains if we don't sell this within the next year and a half. And, what do you mean uh, if you don't? This is, I don't understand that. Well, we, uh, we bought our new house six months ago. And this used to be your previous house. And this was, used to be our primary well, residence. Well, now you got a problem with that unless you can demonstrate that you couldn't sell it because you rented it. Well, I, I think we can. We did talk, consult a tax, uh, our tax guy before yeah. we made that move. And he, and he told you that, that you're going to have to prove that you couldn't sell it, so you're just renting it to... Right, we are renting it to, to very good friends, and we just fell into this other house well, deal, and, and he thought there were enough factors where we could prove that we were intending to sell it. We were trying to sell it, but couldn't. Right. That's what you got to prove. Right. And you, did you, I hope you ran some ads. Uh, we did not. Well, I would if I were you. Okay. To demonstrate this, because that's one of the things IRS is going to look for. Okay. I appreciate that. I wish you well, kid. Thank you, Bruce. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around for more. This is TalkNet. Let's get back to New the York. calls. Hello there. Welcome to TalkNet. Hi, Bruce. Hi. We have a 19-year-old son in college. All right. We pay his tuition, uh -huh. room and board, right. plus clothing and medical care. Yeah. He has acquired on his own several credit cards. He has run them up to fifteen hundred dollars in about a year and a half. Lovely. Does this kid work? Well, he's he's a charmer. I, I didn't uh, ask if he's a charmer. Does he work? Uh, he doesn't want to work eight hours a day. He'll take a four-hour job or something like this. Lovely. And, uh, like in a clothing store or something like this. Mm-hmm. But my question is, he can't pay them off. Yeah. What uh, what should I do? What recourse do we have? Should we notify? Well, did, did you sign for these credit cards? No. Well, you're not responsible for them. Uh huh? The, uh, you realize that if he allows these things to go into default or whatever, it's going to screw up his credit for a long time. He was told this when he got them. Does he care? I don't know. <laughs> uh, have, you, have you discussed it with him? Yes, we have. What's he say? Uh, he wants us to pay him off. Well, that's terrific. But, uh, by what logic? Well, he doesn't want his he doesn't want his credit room. Well, you tell him to get off his you know what and he have yeah. And what's he say to that? Well, he uh, can't work and go to school too. Why not? Well, that's what he says. Why not? Is he dead? Does he date? He sure does. Well, you tell him to stop dating. That'll start. That'll give him lots of time to work to stay away from the chicks. We've gone through this before, but I think what I really call for is uh, I have no legal obligation that you know of. Not that I know of, no. I see. It sounds to me like you've kind of spoiled this boy. Well, let's say it's a... <laughs> I think so, yes. Yeah, and listen, that's not a capital crime. You would be the first or the last. Yeah. But, uh... I tell you, look, hey, boy, it's your credit, not mine. He's not a junior, is he? Please tell me he's not. Oh, uh, he's, uh, he's a sophomore. 
No, I mean, <laughs> I meant junior with your name. Oh, no. Okay, because no. that, you know, that could cause you a lot of grief, you know, get yeah. confused. Yeah. I would just say, look, you ran these bills up, you got to pay them. Now, there's, so there's, you, either you can be a man or you can be a little baby boy. You it's a grown-up time, right? Yeah, time, this is the real world, boy. Man or boy. Well, I let them sink. And I, it ain't easy to let your kid get bruised. Yeah, because I have been there, and I can. I'm speaking from firsthand experience. But I heard one uh, one sociologist call these credit cards social dynamite. This is well, what we I mean, it's like any other tool. Pack of matches is social dynamite too. Don't these people check on these people, on these kids? Well, sure they do. What they're doing is they're taking a chance that the kid will be okay and then he becomes a customer for life. But don't blame the credit card company. That's like blaming the guy who manufactures the gun for the murder mm -hmm. or, the, or the knife or whatever. Your kid's the one to blame. He's the you see, that's like saying, well, we're, we put temptation out there, and after all, we had to shoot the temptress. Mm -hmm. No, you don't shoot the temptress. Mm -hmm. Does that mean, if, if there's a hooker out there, does that mean you got to go to bed with her? Right. There's narcotics being sold. Does that mean you got to start shooting? It's all up to him. It's up to him, that's right. And I put it right in his lap. Okay, let him, Bruce. Let him suffer the consequences. Okay. It ain't easy being pop, is it? Thank you, very you, you know. <laughs> I bet you're a life. Thank you very much. Take good care. Naperville, Illinois. Hello there. Welcome to TalkNet. Hi, Bruce. Hi. Nice to talk to you. Hey, I'll tell you, I'm a 32-year-old uh, uh, salesman, and I'm thinking of a career change or somewhat of a career change. What do you sell now, and how do you sell it? Uh, I'm into uh, medical products, and uh, I... To uh, whom do you sell? Uh, two hospitals. Okay. You call upon administrators or pharmacists or what? Uh... Anybody in the hospital, lots, lots of different uh, departments in that, okay. department heads. How you do, how you do, how long you've done it? I've been doing this for uh, about ten years now, and, and uh, I've done very doing? well. And uh, uh, income-wise, uh, I've uh, managed to make a good income, and uh, I have a wife who works as well. How and, much? Do you, how much do you earn? Well, combined income, we're looking. No, how much do you earn? Oh, uh, we're talking around. about you right now. You're right. Uh, about forty-five thousand a year. Okay, and, and and you want to pack all this in? Well, uh, you know, there comes a point in time where you you know somewhat want to get out on your own and you know be your own boss and all that the uh, uh, pioneer type spirit. And uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to kind of throw this by and see what you thought about uh, you know what I'm thinking of doing. Okay, how old are you? you didn't tell me that. Thirty-two. Okay, and you have kids? Uh, one child. Okay, so you and your wife is earning how much? Uh, about uh, twenty six thousand a year. Okay, you got a good income right now. Mm -hmm. Go. Uh, thinking of uh, getting into uh, retail, uh, the specialty uh, furniture market, uh, uh, targeting it at juvenile furniture, uh, baby furniture, that type of thing. How did you happen to focus on that? Well, it just seems that it's an area that uh, uh, has some potential. That there isn't anybody around uh, our immediate area servicing that market. All right. And we have a lot of uh, young uh, uh, baby age uh, parents out there that uh, <laughs> baby age <laughs> productive, huh? right? Yeah, that are okay. looking uh, for uh, not necessarily uh, inexpensive things, because there's lots of uh, uh, avenues to buy that. But uh, a good quality furniture, uh, and once they get out of the crib, then getting into uh, you know juvenile type furniture, first beds, uh, you know. Uh, bedroom sets, those types of things. Mm -hmm. so, uh, question is, uh, what do you think a reasonable investment would be into that, uh, and what do you think the rate of failure would be on something like that? I, don't, I can't tell you either. I can tell you that furniture in general uh, is a highly competitive enterprise. Mm -hmm. It requires in very substantial amounts of capital for uh, both floor and real and, uh, and uh, Warehouse, mm -hmm. and I think, I think you're going to find. I could be mistaken, but unlike the real upscale furniture buyer, uh, they're going to when a guy walks in, he wants to buy a crib or a high chair or that kind of stuff. He wants to walk out of the door with it, mm -hmm. as opposed to well, come back in 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, given that that set of conditions, uh, you have to have a, a very substantial amount of. of uh, Merchandise in the warehouse, ready to deliver when the customer walks to the door. Right. The failure rate, I wouldn't want to take a shot at. Now you're going to be competing with some national chains, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, and they can be competed with successfully. Sure. Uh, you outservice them. 
but it's a, it's a, a confirmatory. Uh, take a look at the ads. All right, mm -hmm. they are substantial, aren't they? Sure. That means that it's a very competitive enterprise. However, the markup is substantial as well. Mm -hmm. it has to be to support the advertising and to support the 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 other uh, costs that are attendant to it. Mm -hmm. what, what what troubles me most, and you know, I'm flying right in my own face when I say this. Is that you're walking to something you know nothing about, and I'm famous for doing that. Right. But I'm also famous for getting my teeth kicked in. Sure. But I fortunately had a couple of successes along the way as well. Mm -hmm. My feeling on it is, if uh, you know, push came to shove, and it uh, was something that uh, just wasn't going to work out, that uh, you know, having a decent track record and whatever with uh, you know outside sales, that uh, I should be able to land on my feet. Oh, I don't think there's that. any question that you can do the job. Mm -hmm. But uh, how about the couple hundred thousand that you blow? Mm -hmm. I mean, what? Well, I don't see how you can start a little dinky stuff. I mean, I'm a, a retailer, among other things. All right, mm -hmm. open up a little tiny little store is a hundred thousand today. Is I'm, that what? It, I'm talking about a little dinky nothing store. Mm -hmm. You know, some cards and gifts, and away you go. A hundred grand just barely opens the door. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine you could do it for less than two, two and a half hundred thousand. Okay, and I think that's that's the, I think that's scratching. Mm -hmm. I really do. And you think that, uh, what, 85% uh, or 90% of that would be just taking up an inventory alone? No, not that high. You have, you have, you have leasehold improvements. Mm -hmm. You have displays that have to be paid for. Mm -hmm. You get the little things like fire extinguishers and, and uh, cash registers, lights, a million other things that have got to go into a new unit. Okay. Now, there's another alternative, but you, it really isn't an alternative because you say there's nothing there. You can't buy an existing in business because there's none to be bought. True. And I, and I, the, the kind of enterprise you're discussing seems to me must be a high traffic proposition, which means high rents. In other words, you can't be out by yourself freestanding, I don't think. Mm, no, that's not what... You've got to be in a mall someplace. Well, I was thinking of a uh, strip shopping center or something like not that. Not in my opinion. No? No, sir. Not, not selling that kind of stuff. Strip mall is okay for delicatessens and pizza joints and florists and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. In and out. Mm -hmm. But if I were in the furniture business, unless you're huge, I mean, there are some, there's some, and we can, you must have in your area, they're everywhere. Sure. Huge furniture operations, people just drive there to go there. Mm -hmm. But I think that the kind of business you're talking about is, is mall oriented, where you're going to benefit from other people's traffic. Hmm. Okay. I would, I would be very reluctant to go into something like that in a strip center. All right. I do wish you well. Thank you very much. Hang in there. I'm Bruce Williams. And, of course, this is TalkNet. Dick is, we have two people producing the show today. is Dick Brennan and Dick Brennan. You see, he's, he's really twins, this boy. Huh. He is running back and forth from one control panel to the other. There's supposed to be two people in there with a tuna fish sandwich in his right paw. A headset, a headset. Oh, I'm sorry. He switched to baloney today. A headset. But you got you to see it's like a comic opera. Go and be, you talk to him. He's the guy that pushes the right buttons. Now, this would not be, this would be cruel if he was just an ordinary person. But he's an executive. The one thing that hasn't changed, he still wears ugly ties. I went out with him New Year's Eve. He and his, his wife is lovely. I got to tell you, it was embarrassing, the tie he had on. Everybody was looking like, who would wear that? Did, 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 with one of these ties, like, he probably didn't have a tie on. And they said, nobody gets similar to a tie. This is the kind they lend you. You ever see those ties they give you when you walk in a restaurant? that yeah. require a tie. and the, well, well, I think Dick has a firm that supplies those ties to the restaurants, and he wears his own merchandise. Other than that, he's got the bologna sandwich as an executive. Brown bagging it. I can't handle it. What's on your mind in Bluefield, Virginia? Okay. Um, I attend college here, and this is my senior year. Yep. And the last couple years, I have applied for the guaranteed student loan. GSLs. Yeah. Yep. And uh, last year, there wasn't any problem. Everything went like they promised. You know, it'd be the checks would be there the day school started, and, you know, everything would work out. You said $2,500 model? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now this year, uh, they had to replace a lot of the faculty at the school and the people that run the financial aid office. They found out they was half doing the job, and they replaced the whole thing. So they promised us, you know, even better service. So the fall semester I had applied and everything they said was all right. So the first day of school comes and the day to pay the fees, and they tell me that my check's not there, but it's coming. And they said that their new policy says that on first day of school, the fees have to be paid or you don't attend class. So they told me that my only option was 
take it out of an account that I may have, that my family may have, or even go to a bank and loan the money. Hmm, they don't want to know from nothing, huh? No, they they said, you know, money today or by Friday, or we kick you out of the computer and you got to wait till the next month. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, huh, boy. And, Is this uh, a state school or a private school? State school. Huh, even though they screwed up. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they told, in fact, I was in the office the day that I was having my problems, and this girl walked in there, and she was about ready to cry. She said, I don't have nobody to turn to. And she said, I don't think that's fair. And the lady that runs the aid office says, nobody told you it would be fair. <laughs> Great attitude. Okay, so where are we going with all this? Okay, um, not only is that, but here uh, this semester, we've got right up to everything, you know, starting. And, again, the check's not there, and they're telling me that by... Tomorrow, I either borrow it again, and you know the whole thing. Well, let me. Hear, how long did it take from the time it was supposed to be there till the time it got to you? Okay, the fall semester it never got there. You're they said that I wasn't eligible on a technicality. What was the technicality? Okay, I needed three semester three uh, credits to graduate. Yeah. And it fell into place that one of them was only offered in the fall, and the other two in the spring. Well, you're not eligible in the spring either, then, are you? No, you can get by with two classes. Six hours uh, is the minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay. They told me, well, you should have took a gym class or something to make yourself eligible. Yeah, I was about to ask you why. They don't, since you're not paying by the credit in the state school. No, we do there. You do pay by the yeah. credit? Uh -huh. All right. And see, I said, well, I didn't know that, and I would have took a gym class or anything because I had to take out what little bit of money I had left over in account, and, mm -hmm. you know, then they told me, well, you're not eligible, we're sorry. Mm -hmm. so, so, now, so where are we going with all this? Okay, well, now they say, well, since I'm taking the right amount of hours that I'm eligible and that there will be no problem, but that uh, everything's backlogged a few weeks and the check would be there, I think, around uh, two weeks from now. Mm. And I'm just... I don't know who I'm going to go to to borrow the $1,000 to hide me over until the 20, you know. I don't know either. I, it just seemed to me that there ought to be some relief valve at the school, particularly since they have some responsibility in this. Yeah, I know. They, um, there's nobody that seems to want to handle it. Like I said, the attitude that they take is what, they, what I heard them tell that girl. You know, this is our policy. This is the way we're handling it, and... If you don't like it, you know, that's, that's life. And, you know, I'm one semester away from getting out. Yeah. And, you know, like I told my dad, you know, I he invested in a, in a little small business. Can your dad loan you the grant? Well, that's what I was saying. We tied up the rest of our extra money in a business that I'm going to take over when well, I graduate. Can you, oh, listen, I've got to turn you loose. Can your dad borrow the money for a month? Well, that's what I'm, I'm wondering. I guess what I was wanting to know from you, is there anybody that you know of that I can go to? I don't know of a soul. I don't know of an ombudsman or anybody that you can, you can borrow money for you on your own without an income. I think what's going to have to come down to unless That's a stinky system. I don't disagree. That your dad will have to go somewhere and borrow the dough, and hopefully the check comes in, you hand him the check, and a little bit of interest changes hand, and that's the end of it. But how about that kid who is in the office who has nowhere to turn? What do you do for her? I think the whole system needs to be reviewed. I'm Bruce Williams. Thanks for your call, son. This is Talk Now. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hello there. Hi, Bruce. Here's my question for you. A couple of years ago, I moved to Florida. Uh, long story short, the job I went down or lost. I moved back to Wisconsin. My family's still in Florida. The house is for sale. Hasn't been sold. Haven't had an offer on it. Huh. Whereabouts in Florida? <clears throat> Uh, Clearwater area, okay. Palm Harbor. Mm -hmm. I'm living uh, with uh, relatives up in Milwaukee, so it's rent free. Everybody's trying to, you know, advice is uh, why don't you rent the home out? Yeah, <clears throat> is that a wise thing to do? Well, 1,500 miles away. It's not. A, it's not a wise thing to do by choice. Uh -huh. It would appear. Why are you not getting any inquiries? Are you just priced too high? <clears throat> no, no, I'm. Uh, uh, Below the uh, appraised value, below the replacement, or the builders build a new one. I've had it with. Uh, but you're not below the market because the market. Otherwise, you'd be getting offers. Well, I'm asking for offers to the real estate people. How much, know, bring how, me an offer. What price range are we at? Uh, 178. Mm -hmm. And you've had no offers. Whatever. No offers. And I'm telling them to bring me. I've been sales, so I'm saying, hey, bring me an offer. Who knows what I'll take for the house? Yeah. Bring me an offer. I haven't had an offer in two years. Well, you're asking 178. Uh huh. How much do you owe on it? 
one uh, one forty nine. Seems to me you're just going to drop the price. Yeah, I told him to do that. You well, know, you drop it. Give me one fifty. But run an ad for one fifty. Uh huh. But my my, yes. my only my only question to you is it wise to? No, it's not wise. But I mean, how long can this? How long have you been been, been separated from your family? <laughs> a couple of years. But uh, I, I'm dumb down her once a month, once every five weeks. Uh -huh. Well, it would seem to me I would not have a lot of enthusiasm over over renting it. Okay. But. Given the the fact that you're separated for two years, I'd give it some serious consideration. Making how much can you rent it for? Uh, you know, hey, who knows? You know, I, if I cover my my well, payment you, up here, I'd be fine. If you cover your nut, you'd be you'd be grateful, I guess. I'd lower the price. I do wish you well, my friend. I do indeed. I'm Bruce Williams. Good hour, kids, for talk Cat. <laughs> The, the ex-partner. Uh-huh. How about the original guy? Is he still getting paid, too? No, no. Uh, or that's over. That's his Right. So you just had to settle. You had to break up this partnership, correct? And you broke it up nine years ago. Exactly. Okay. Now, um, when I bought him out, I had to put my house up to cover the, the deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you, did you borrow money from a third party? No, no. Uh, he just wanted the house in case the, you the defaulted. The partner took, took the note back. I see, but he wanted the extra collateral. Of exactly. The we had started at that time uh, at $90,000. Mm -hmm. I'm now down to $23,000. All right. And I've been here a total of 22 years. Hmm. And I'm I'm getting tired a little bit of it. The business is good. And I'm, I'm thinking in, in terms of hopefully being able to sell the business and maybe get someone younger in here who can do the same for me as I've done for my ex-partner. and, right. and You want to pass the baton. Right, exactly. I got you. That's not unusual. And go on to, how old are you? I'm 49. Okay, what do you want to do after you, let's assume that this all works out. Now what? What do you want to do? I would I would like to work for for somebody else and work less hours than I'm working now. Just be, but I still want to be a pharmacist. Yes. Without the responsibility of, of, of ownership or whatever. The long hours. Yeah, I have, a, I have a good friend that did that. He owned his own pharmacy for many years. Yep. And now he's working for one of the big, he sold his place. Now he's working for one of the big chains, but he said, look, I go there, I forget about it when I leave at night. Exactly. Exactly. Now, my question is that I, I own a home. The home that I own, I bought 17 years ago when, it, when prices were very low. All right. And now and it's got a very low mortgage on it. Good. I'm wondering whether or whether I can take a home equity loan mm -hmm. and pay off, pay the off partner? my ex partner. Why not? How much do you owe on the house? Uh fourteen thousand dollars. And it's it's worth in, in excess of, of three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. My goodness. How what did you pay for it? Uh in the sixties. Okay, well then well, the reason I asked that that's your base. Right. So you could borrow the money on a home equity loan, and the, with the all of the interest would be deductible, which is a nice right. situation. Right, right, because because at this point, business wise, I'm paying him mostly principal now and very very little interest. Well, be, be, even putting that aside, uh, you want if you want to sell the place, it'd be a lot cleaner if you owned it free and clear. Exactly. And because your base is sixty thousand. Up to sixty thousand dollars worth of principal can be borrowed, and the interest on that money, or or capital, call what you will, uh, is deductible. So you see, you know your house is worth say your house is worth three hundred thousand for second discussion, right? Right. If you borrowed a quarter of a million, you could not deduct the interest on the quarter of a million, only on the first sixty thousand. Oh, okay. That's your base. Okay. 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 I I've, I've called the bank, and they have given me a a line of credit. Mm hmm. To use if if I yeah I understand want to that's that's fine that's I have no problem with that but I, I just want you to understand the tax ramification oh okay all. only the first sixty grand okay or, but so that would be sixty less whatever your mortgage is today okay because right that's that's already being deducted so that's not a bad plan of attack I I, I also have one daughter in college and a second one going into college mm -hmm. and and I'm I'm thinking in terms of of this home equity loan in case in case I need extra monies well. Then you can go over the sixty thousand because that's deductible. Right. The oh. for, for borrowing money for under and talk to your accountant, but for medical or for uh, educational purposes, 
is deductible over and above the 60. It puts another little little uh, facet on this diamond we're polishing up here. Okay. But in, but in, in terms of, of those lines, am I, am I thinking straight? To I have no problem at all. Okay. Now, the, 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 the big trick when you sell a business, as you should know better than I, is to find the proper person Exactly. As contrasted with just the big down payment. Exactly, because because in 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 two or three years, I don't I, I don't want to take take it back and have to start working it again. Never mind, just start working it. In two or three years, they could run it right into the ground. Exactly. That's the worst part. It's not even just question of taking it back. Exactly. It isn't like taking back a, a building that you they it's, you can kind of you know refresh and and uh, refurbish. Okay. A business a guy can destroy in a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce, I, I thank you very, very much. I'm a big fan of yours, and I, I listen to you every night as I, as I drive home. I put in long hours. I'm sure you do. And I make sure when I go go home that I'm, I'm, I, uh, I, I put on WTIC here in Hartford, oh, yeah. and I listen to you every night. Well, you know, when I was a youngster, would you believe I used to work in a cup? I, I worked in a drugstore I ultimately bought. Really? Yeah, that's true. I, worked, I started working there when I was 12 or 13. And then I went on to work for a couple of guys, Sammy Lafer and Joe Schaffman. And I learned more from those two guys, Sam and Joe, hmm. than I ever learned in any college or university environment. And that's a fact. Hmm. They were they were they were quite a piece of work though. They had the service drug company and by golly that's what it was. Wow. It was on a corner, you know. They had a little post office substation in there. I don't care what you asked for. You went in and wanted a tack hammer. They'd find a tack hammer for you. Exactly. You, I mean, it wasn't didn't matter. And this is this, this is illustrative of of what can happen. I remember very well. I, I worked there, grew up there. Uh, you know, worked behind a soda fountain, made the syrups, the whole business, right? Hmm, yeah. And no matter what you asked for, when you walked in there, Sam and Joe had it. They complimented each other. These two guys. One guy was was the real astute businessman. The other guy was a a Phi Beta Kappa a thinker. And uh, they're thinking of uh, evicting me out of here. Well, that happens when you don't pay your rent. They chuck you out. That'll that'll go. That'll do it every time. Okay, I understand that. By the third, I'm going to have the money plus late charges. Well, today's the first, right? Uh, more or less, yeah. More or less. What day is it? No, thirty first. Thirty first. So you got three more days to stall them. Can't you stall them for three days? I can stall them for three days. All right, then do so. Okay, I uh, I told them I I can pay them on the third. Is oh. that possible? Well, they well, when how far behind are you? Only one month. You you owe them for May. This month, just this month that we're yeah. uh, May. May. And on the third, you can give them the whole works. I can give them the whole works. May and June. May, possibly June, too. Well, what do you mean, possibly? The June well, is due. let's say June, too, also. Mm-hmm. Okay? I can give the whole ball of wax. What do they say? The office says, no, we we uh, can't do that. you got to talk to our lawyer. We're starting an eviction notice. Well, let them start. Hmm? It takes more than three days to kick you out. Right. And tenants are not, that's not so easy to find. I, I, it would seem to me if you pay them, they'll be, you'll be all right. Uh-huh. And my wife is, uh, we had uh, break-in problems with our car mm -hmm. in this complex, and I and my wife wants to move out. Well, then move out. Okay. <laughs> Which way do you want to go? Uh, well, they want I, you to I move out, your wife wants to move out, you're in the minority here, aren't you? Well, true, true. I'm, uh, I'm an, uh, an OEO. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what can I say? Pardon me? What can I say? They want to kick you out, and <laughs> your wife wants to go. That's a pretty good combination. Goodbye. Really? I wish you but, well. You know, I figure it costs more moving than it will be staying. But that's another matter. That's between you and your wife. Right. Good luck, my friend. Sure thing. Always costs money to move. That's clear. Here we go now to Pennsylvania, White Oak, Pennsylvania. Hello there. How you doing, Bruce? Everybody I possibly can. What's up? Uh, I got a question for you. My, um, I work for a golf shop here and I get paid once a month a and I'm golf? on a hourly wage. Uh, how does this person calculate my overtime? It's the, number of, it's the number of hours over 40 you work in any one week. Okay, but I get paid from, let's say this past month, from May 1st to May 31st. Got to break it down into seven-day periods. Okay, we average it out or just take it 
like there was like three days in the first week. He has to establish. I mean, it seemed to me. I don't. First of all, I'm not even sure he's allowed to do what he's doing. Pay you once a month, and I, but that may or may not be the case. Seems to me you're supposed to pay every either two or max four weeks. Right. You're entitled to overtime for every every hour you work over forty and every seven day period. And he's got to put it on seven day periods. Now it's unfortunate though that the months don't work out that way, but that's right. the way it is. Okay. Um, another question, quick question. I used to listen to you down on WDBO in Orlando. Yes, indeed. And, we're still there. Uh, no, I moved re- recently up here to Pittsburgh. Oh, no, wait a second. We're still there. Oh, that's good. We're on KQV in Pittsburgh. Oh, uh, KQV? You bet. Okay, thanks a lot, Bruce. You're very welcome. Enjoy the program. Anytime yeah, you have a problem with something that you're, like you're talking about, give the uh, Department of Labor in your state a call. Explain the circumstances, and they can tell you what formula you have to use. Charlotte, North Carolina, it's your turn on talking that. Hello. Hi, thanks, Bruce. Thanks for taking my call. I have a bit of a quandary, and I'm hoping you can help me. I have a BA in communications. Um, my background is in sales. Mm-hmm. I'm presently working in property management. What does that mean? I'm an assistant resident manager for a fairly large property here in Charlotte. You like that? Um, I enjoy it. It's a good mix between the administrative and the people work for me. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it's not paying <laughs> what I need to make. Can't keep the beans and rice on the table. Huh? Yeah, I'm having a hard time. So have I got. Just had a new baby and everything. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. So what is it you'd like to do? Well, I've been on a job search started about six weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, started out interviewing mostly in property management, trying to work my way up, and finding that in this market, even in the next level, it's not the income that I need to make. All right, well, let's assume then you've researched the situation and property management is not where you're going to find your life fulfillment here. I think that is pretty much the case. All right. How old are you? I'm 28 years old. All right. you, you just mentioned you just had a rug rat. That's the first one? That's correct. You're married? I am. Okay. So you have a little bit of slack, at least, uh, um, with, with the second income coming well, in. Well, yeah, but not much at this point. We had more or less cleared out our entire uh, life savings, paying off the hospital bills, and, and every month is, is real tight. You're just so. living from paycheck to paycheck. Exactly. And... For a four-year degree, I'd like to do a little bit better. Mm-hmm. I think that's a reasonable expectation. I don't know how marketable my skills are. My background, as I mentioned before, is inside and outside sales. I'm not a good typist. I can't type the 40 words per minute minimum. I have limited uh, piece, you know, computer experience. I've also looked. I've gone to employment agencies, management recruiters. I read the, you know, what color is your parachute book? <laughs> I'm doing everything I possibly can to to get myself in a better situation. Well, have you taken your uh, really a good clean inventory of your skills? I have. I have. What's your um, biggest strength? My biggest strength is my people skills. What does that mean? I well, think that's a very bad answer from a personnel point of view. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, no, don't be sorry. I'm um, just pointing out that that's what 99% of the people will say to you. What do you want to do? I want to work with people. I mean, it's meaningless, in other words. Yeah, well, You've got to do a lot better than that. Most jobs work with people. Anyway, That's right. Sure I mean, there's, once in a while you find a gorilla, yeah. but usually it's people. So, I mean, I think you have to be a little more focused than that. Okay, well, service-oriented, basically. Something where I am doing something to help somebody else. Um, be it renting them a car, be it uh, renting them a hotel room. Um, be it renting them uh, an apartment. I mean, any- all of the things you mentioned are not exactly in the degree high paid areas. No, they're not, and that's mostly my background. Well, scratch in- that though. Well, I know that's that's the problem I'm having. I I don't really enjoy the outside sales due to the the travel. I would like to spend some time with my family, although the high income potential attract attracts me. Well, but now, now you have put your finger on. The eternal some of the, laundry? Well, some of the interesting compromises that most of us are called upon to make. It does it, feel like a compromise. Well, it is a compromise. It, it, it obviously is. High-paid positions, 99% of the time, 99 and a fraction. Mm-hmm. High-paid positions require sacrifice generally from the family because mm-hmm. people don't make big money working 40 hours a week. That's true. People don't make big money going in from 9 to 5. Mm-hmm. And staying in one place usually. Yeah. There, there's more often than not travel. 
required to some degree, which everybody says is so glamorous that you've done it for a while. And <laughs> yeah. suddenly, like last week, I slept in five different hotels in five consecutive nights. But that could give you a drag. Yeah, I can tell you just how much of a thrill that is. Mm. Uh, but that goes with a terror. I'm not, I'm not complaining. Goes with, uh, nobody put a gun in my ear and made me do these things. Yeah. That goes with a territory. Well, I'm not afraid of hard work. I mean, I'm sure that's true, but what I'm trying to get to is you said... But I don't want to do thus and such because it takes away from my family life. I know and, that, that and that's not a crime. Yeah. But it, but it's a major limitation. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking of um, is a retraining of some sort. Now I have actually had the opportunity uh, to have a professional sales and sales management training course, which was very valuable. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I I am kind of limiting myself by not really wanting to do a whole lot of overnight travel. Well, that's there. There, there are a ton of good jobs that don't require you to travel overnight. Sales jobs, sure. That have uh, anywhere from thirty thousand on up. Well, sure. But you see, we're in, the, and I, I have to let you go here. Okay. But we're. But let me just leave you with a thought, and maybe we can get back together again in a couple of weeks. Okay. I want, or maybe I want you to we'll do the Socratic method here. You tell me what a salesperson, then you have exactly 15 seconds. Go. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. What is a salesperson? A salesperson to me is somebody uh, who is helping another person meet their needs. Um, Continue. That's all right, but you got to do better than that. <laughs> okay. Um, Three uh, seconds. Sorry, a, cyn a cynical uh, view of a salesperson is somebody who's pushing something onto somebody that may not necessarily need, but to me it's just a meeting of a need. All right, well, okay, enough, need. enough, enough. First of all, I, I kind of worry about cynicism and that sort of thing. By, de by my definition, a salesperson is one who creates the need in the person's mind. Okay. An order taker is the person who walks in, you know damn well that they need 10 cases of cleanser. Yeah. And you schmooze a little bit, and you get your ta and you and you take the red up ten cases. Anybody can do that. Now it's true some are a little better at it, and another guy may get a little better display and whatever. But that's an order taker, mm -hmm. not a salesman. But the the quintessential salesman is a life insurance salesman. Oh yeah. Very few people buy life insurance. There are many people are sold life insurance, mm -hmm. and that's why they're paid so well as they should be. Because they create the sale. It's ironic you should say that. I just happened to go on an insurance salesperson interview this morning. Okay. Now, see, casualty insurance, no. No, this is that's not, not. That's not. That, that everybody knows they got. They, not everyone does it, but they should have automobile insurance. Yeah, this is home auto and. Home auto is not sold. Well, licensing for financial planning was what they are looking no, to. But that's where the that's selling. Life is selling. Yeah. Home, automobile, you got to have it. It's the yeah. question of where. Yeah. But that's what I think you have to come to grips with. Now, that's a heck of a lot tougher, my dear. So you and, don't and, think and, a retraining scheme and something, I mean, I thought of something as even as outlandish as secretarial. Well, if that's what you want to do, there's nothing outlandish about that. Well, I don't but, know. But it just know. seems to me with, with what you, you've already devoted four years to a, to a degree program, and it just occurs to me that you might be uh, better equipped to do other things than just secretarial. Well, and I'm not, that is not denigrating the secretary. No, I know. I'd but, like to think so, but I mean, so far I haven't really had too too good a luck. Well, that's first of all, luck is certainly about eighty-five to ninety percent perspiration and just ten percent inspiration. Mm -hmm. I do wish you well. Thanks. Take the inventory and describe. Think about it. Okay. Thanks. Hi, Bruce Williams. Stick around. This is Talknet. Hello, Bruce. Did you get to the race? Yeah, no, but I listened to it. I wouldn't fight the traffic. Yeah, that, is, that is traffic jam beyond all traffic jam. Oh, it sure is. You know, it's funny. They block it out in your area. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. understand that. I can't imagine people wouldn't go. Well, it's uh, it, it's not where I get out the qualifications and uh, see the crowd a little bit, but to fight at race day for three hours, huh? Three? <laughs> took, what, th last year, it seems to me, it took us five to get out. It would. Three oh. hours of race is what I mean. Oh, I see. Battle all day to get out there for three hours of race. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Bruce, I uh, heard you talking about your accident, and uh, I was involved in a similar thing here a while back. Oh, the automobile accident, yeah. And I didn't bother you with it at the time. I thought about it. But uh, I was uh, going uh, in a through lane, and uh, cars were making left turns at a uh, busy hour, and uh, they let a gal turn into the side of my 
truck, which is not my truck. It's a company vehicle. Mm -hmm. She uh, turned right into the side of it, thinking the traffic was clear. And uh, uh, she said I was in a berm. Well, I'm an ex-surveyor, too. And I went out and surveyed all that and documented everything it was in and uh, kept pushing my company. And uh, their insurance wouldn't pay anything, wouldn't pay anything. And uh, finally, my company decided, well, we'll go to court over it because mm -hmm. I'd give them enough information to prove that it was that lady's fault and nobody else's. Mm -hmm. And when bottom line, when it come down to it, and uh, they knew they was going to court, they said they would uh, assume 80% of the responsibility, mm -hmm. but 20% that my company well, they, they told me 50-50, and I said, no way. Oh, well, so where are we going to go? Where's the car going to go? Unless you, unless you could figure out a way to have it fly. Yeah. Uh, and even there, you'd probably have the, 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 the truck would roll over on you. I mean, uh, it just boggles the imagination. Well, you know, this is a comparative negligence state. So that means if we'd have stayed home, there would have been an accident. Right. Well, well that's, that's a great theory. If this would have been my own vehicle, I would have took it to court, and I thought, well, now what kind of an insurance company is this that we have to assume 20% of it is better than $1,200 damage, mm -hmm. and my company didn't want to fool with the uh, lawyers and everything else. If they could collect 80%, we just went on with I it. I understand that, and that's but, probably the pragmatic way to go under, but under I talk, similar circumstances I might go along, but not this trip. Well, I talked to another guy, and I find out that's general practice, and this cost him his insurance because he had been involved in other accidents, and as soon as he admitted 20% wrong in an accident that wasn't his fault, they canceled him mm -hmm. because he had had a couple other accidents right. before. But he admitted that he was liable for 20% of it. Well, See, they got you going either way. No, they don't have me going situation. either way. They not, have me or my this, company. Not this trip, they don't. <laughs> this trip, if nothing else, as I say, one of the nice things you can do to these rascals is cost them a ton. Right. Because they got to, they can say, well, the lawyers are on the staff, but if enough of their lawyers are tied up in, in small courts, they may just decide that maybe we ought to play this a little bit more honestly. I mean, I'm sitting there going on the country saying, don't stick it to the insurance companies, and I believe that. You don't add on to your claim and so on and so forth. No. You, but you ought to be made whole. Oh, I believe that. And, uh, well, I, I wanted to share this with you, oh, and I, I, I sure want to stay tuned and, and listen to what your outcome is. Well, it probably takes several months, and we'll, yeah. but we'll have to see. And if I lose, I'll tell you that, too. That's okay, but you're going to let them know you were there. You, they'll, they'll know they've been in a cat fight. <laughs> That's neat. I All wish right. you well, my friend. Nice talking to you. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around for more, kids, because this is TalkNet. All righty, to the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois. Thank you much for your patience. What's doing? Hey, my pleasure, and am I glad to be on now after all of that criticizing on the insurance. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, what, what? what can I say? I own an insurance agency. Nothing but, wrong with that. But that's not bad. That's of course not. Bad. not. And, and clearly, you, know, you serve a useful purpose. Thank you. And, I, and I, um, I, I applaud you for going after the individuals because... That's what you know. We recommend for our clients that if they feel they've been wronged, even by our company, mm -hmm. uh, then hey, you have the right. And I, I'm sitting. I think you have the responsibility. Absolutely. That's why uh, you know we have a, a somewhat of a crisis in the insurance industry right oh, now. Oh, huge crises. <clears throat> well, I try not to say huge, but we do have somewhat of a crisis. <laughs> Titanic. <laughs> Kind of small, yeah. Okay, we only have two minutes. Let's spend them wisely. All right, really good. What I'm trying to, to to do is I would like to expand my sales by offering other related services or or, or even items to my customer base. I mean, what you're saying is rather than, than increase the customer base, you want to have more do more business with each customer. That's correct. Customer oh. base is comfortable at this point. Uh, obviously, I'd like to continue, but I'd also like to have uh, an expansion of other products as well. Okay. What do you think? I think it's been a long time. Great. Like I mean, what? you're in the. Are you in the casualty business? Uh, multiple lines, sixty forty. All right, sixty casualty, forty life. Right. Or forty life related. Thank you. You may want to go more into the life related, where the where the uh, commissions and the 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 dollars spent are considerably larger. Mm -hmm. Into financial planning, get the background and so on and so forth. Offer some of the other products. Certainly, the mutual fund products are natural for someone like yourself. We were thinking of a series seven uh, license. I'm sorry? Uh, Series 7 license. I'm not familiar. That's local. Oh, that? Okay. Stocks. So you can sell stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, sure. I mean, you, you, let, let, if you're good at what you do, if you're good at what you do, mm -hmm. you should have uh, developed a good relationship with your clients. 
a, a relationship of trust, based upon trust. Correct. I mean, let's face it, you don't sell them anything but paper. That's exactly it. Only, and, and you're only the only time that you're of any consequence is when things go screwy. <laughs> if things are going well, you get the money, and that's the end of it. Yeah. So the only time that you that they need you is when there is a problem, and that's the time. I, I mean, you're in an you are in an enterprise where the name of the game is service. Service. Absolutely. Sure. And if you can if you can build that reputation, you build that that uh, aura of trust, which I hope you wouldn't abuse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. But that's where it's where it's at. Sounds good. And you know, one of the things you can, when when you have a uh, your one of your insureds has a claim that really doesn't involve you, if you're willing to take the time to help them through the process, that's going to go a long way toward developing that trust. Take a step beyond. You got it. Thank you so much. I do wish you well. You too. Well, you know, I'm all for these. I, I truly support them, but not uh, the Cretan fringe. <laughs> Bruce Williams. This is tough. Well, how you doing? Hey, welcome to my world. Welcome to TalkNet. Yeah, I'd be delighted if you'd give me a call. You can be back bay, downtown, or out in the burbs, but... By golly, if you're a WHDH listener, I would hope that you'd pick up your phone and give me a shout. The number's 800. You know that means toll-free. 800-TALKNET, T-A-L-K-N-E-T. Or if you like the numbers and tell you the truth, I do. 800-825-5638. Well, doesn't matter which way you dial it, you'll get to us, Boston, and we'll be delighted to have a talk. So sit back, relax, enjoy. Hey, if you like what you hear, you might tell a friend or a neighbor. I'd appreciate that. I wouldn't need. I'm Bruce Williams. Welcome to Talk Man. Omaha, Nebraska, you are here for kickoff. Oh, thanks, Bruce. It's so good to talk to you. What's on your mind, hon? Well, I feel as though I'm a victim of discrimination. Who is doing this dirty deed? Uh, uh, well, it's actually a local financing institution. I went in to get a loan on a new vehicle. A new car, huh? Okay, a new pickup, actually. A new pick 'em up truck. Okay. Well, I don't understand. Everybody's calling them vehicles. I don't uh, know. Unless they're unless they were in the in the military a million years ago, and they called them vehicles. Well, maybe. Just maybe I have a lot of government surplus. Well, I own a trucking firm too, by the way. All right. And fine. I'm surprised they don't pay off on your claim just right away. Well, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. go ahead. You want well, to buy a pick 'em up okay. truck, and what's the problem? This started a week ago. I went in and I cut a deal, buy a new truck, and uh, it didn't seem to be a problem. They sent the pickup home with me, and they went to different institutions to finance it. Yeah, I, you see that right away. That's something that is not done in many parts of the country. Okay. Where they will they give you the the uh, the automotive product mm-hmm. before you have the financing lined up, and then two days later they call up and say, oh, "Hello, um, hit a bell. We got a problem here." Well, that's kind and, of. And what... bring back the truck and oh, your trade in. Well, uh, we had that crushed. Well, <laughs> close. They fortunately had my car still that I traded in. Where I feel as though I've been discriminated is my husband, who has a, a competing business to mine, actually. <laughs> is that right? Okay. Um, oh, we're, we're competing, but not competing. He yeah. has. He went out and bought two new pickups, just like the one I traded for. Mm-hmm. Okay. On his credit history, he has land repossession, car repossession. You know, I'm talking about a very spotted history. And they <laughs> came to me. And you? Have, you have a good history, I take it. Right. I have one one small item worth $800 that's in dispute where I feel as though I was misrepresented. And that's it. And I filed my little disclaimer with the credit bureau, of course, you know, so mm-hmm. that the People I'd like to get credit with, we'll see what's happened. Yeah. My um, my banker gave me a good review. My major credit card people gave me a good review. And a couple of people that I do business with on a small in-house, you know, like fuel accounts for my semi, gave me good reviews. Who gave you the bad write-up? <sighs> the one company that you have this matter in dispute? What's, what, is, what is in dispute? Let's talk about okay. it. Okay. It's, it's an $800. I bought a local spa membership. One of those lifetime ones. Oh, yeah, those sucker. Right, right. And I, I said to her, I asked her, I go, do you write your own paper? 
or is it sold? I found with personal accounts, I get better treatment when it's carried in-house. Well, I hope there's any question about that. And I prefer to know who I'm doing business with. But that doesn't mean that they can't sell it, though. Right. And I had asked her, would this be sold? And she says, oh, absolutely not. Well, of course, two weeks later, I get a call from the people who bought it. And first they say, well, we're a member, oh, you know, affiliated with the spa. Well, then come to find out, no, they're not. They buy their contracts. Well, but they have every right to sell it. Right. I, I don't dispute Unle Unless you got something in writing saying we will hold the paper. Well, yeah, she, had wrote, she had wrote down on a slip of paper that said this is to be carried in-house, well, as are all 90-day famous cash accounts, and I'd had a friend also, not that has any bearing, sitting there with me. It doesn't have, it has no bearing and what, unless you put something in the contract and saying this, this note is not assignable. I made an error. I admit. See what you could have done. I, I admit that, you know, and of course I... So why don't you, I mean, do you have a dispute with the company or are you just angry about this, this part of it? Or do you have a dispute with the spa? That, that has a lot to do with it because it was my understanding when they were trying to tell me that they were part of the spa. Without regard, let's get past that. Okay. Right? Do you have a problem with your spa membership? I, I haven't been back. It's been a year. Because, keep, because of that? I told them to keep no, my 30% down, which is 300 Be, Wait a minute. Because of that? Because of the paper being changed? Yes. You're dead wrong. Okay. You're just 100% wrong. Okay. You haven't got a leg to stand on. I, I, I see. I feel, yeah, I can understand that, but to a certain degree, do you really feel that that gives them... Yes, ma'am. You do. They, they, they're there to look. Without regard to the paper, the spa is there. They're ready to give you the service, let you use the pool, lift the weights, all that kind of good stuff. There they were at the time when they are now. So I don't know. All right. Right. Where they put the paper is really not your concern. Didn't cost you anything. Now I understand the point you've made, and I'm not necessarily disagreeing with it. But I, that doesn't give you the the right to walk out from under the paper. I think you just you just weren't thinking too well in this one. Well, that's possible. That's very possible. But I I guess I'm thinking that where he has all all of these I mean repossessions I'm talking multi thousand dollars. Well, first of all, I don't necessarily agree with them denying you credit. Don't misunderstand me. And why? But there's I can decide to lend two gorillas money if I choose to. And not lend it to uh, if you wanted to borrow it. And obviously, we you know H. Ross Perot. It's it's that's my choice as a lender. Mm -hmm. I cannot refuse to lend them the money on the basis of gender. I can't refuse on ethnicity and and all of the classic no nos. But if I want to, uh, if I decide I want to lend it to someone with a shaky credit history and not to another who's shaky but not real shaky, that's my privilege. So basically, they don't really have to adhere to a firm criteria. On every person, certainly not. Certainly not. Well, I guess that answers my question. <laughs> I mean, we, it would be different if you said the reason they wouldn't let me the money is because I was a woman. If you prove that, yeah, you got a case. But I don't think that's a case. Okay. I mean, if I, let me should I, should I tell you something? Okay. If that showed up, and if I was sitting on a board, and just exactly what you told me showed up. I wouldn't lend you a nickel if you put a gun to my head. But you would somebody who, I mean, has had vehicles repossessed. I might or might not. That's another story. But if you were, if I were on some kind of a loan committee, and the, and you gave the explanation you just gave to me, mm -hmm. I'd say, wow, I don't want to lend this person any money. Either. They're liable to find something that some perceived, perceived slight, perceived. Okay. Well, we do everything we're supposed to do. We give her the good product and so forth, and you haven't quarreled with the product. And she has some perceived slight. She won't pay us. Who needs that person? Get her out. Well, I guess I can understand it that way, but I thought it was strange where he didn't even have to fill out I don't disagree. That, that's an a, that, but that's a sidebar. That's a, that's a whole different thing. You know. Now, why they gave him, I mean, I wouldn't lend him money either. I mean, if you want to, if that make you feel better, I wouldn't lend your old man a nickel. Not I wouldn't either. Okay, but the but we're just talking about your particular case, right? With if somebody had adopted that position with someone else, boy, oh boy, oh boy, there's not a way in the world I'd loan any money. All I see is trouble. Do you suppose if I would go ahead and take 
these people off. I realize that's going to still appear on my credit history. I'd go talk to him about having it removed, saying that we had a dispute, and we settled the dispute amicably, and uh, you were in, in good standing. I wouldn't pay my... I mean, at this point, I, you, you, you're already in up to your eyes. Okay. I try to cut a deal. Okay. I wish you well there. Thanks a lot. Did you get the truck? No, they uh, they came and picked it up a little oh. bit earlier. Oh, boy. That was... How do I put it? My, You know, it's pretty embarrassing because I really needed it for work. Mm -hmm. so, well, there ought to be somebody else who could work the financing out for you. I, I think so. I just, you know, I offered them... Yeah. Well, you know, trust fund accounts and stocks uh -huh. that I have, you know, as additional collateral, and they mm. didn't seem interested. Oh, boy. There's somebody out there. If you have collateral, it'll... But just, uh, really, I thought I'd rethink this one. I'm Bruce Williams. Agree or disagree? I am delighted you're here on TalkNet. In, in the springtime, I was offered two positions in Spain to work for some health and fitness clubs doing swimming programs. This is in a... In a wait a while. You're... Working for a Spanish organization I'm, in Spain. Right, right. I'm, gonna, I, I'm a Spanish teacher here, and I, I felt like I needed to improve my Spanish skills, so okay. I found these two positions. Well, the problem is I went to the Chicago consulate, the Spanish consulate in Chicago, and, and I applied for my working visa, mm -hmm. and they said it would take two months, and it's been over three months now, and, you know, I keep calling them, and they say, oh, well, now it could take much longer. Manana. Manana, and I know they're very slow, but I, the problem is, I mean, is there anyone I can call, or is anyone I can talk to? Not that I know of. I, okay. I mean, they're, let's face it, they, they, they are not going to exhibit a great deal of enthusiasm over an American coming to take a job, which clearly can be, felt, can be filled by someone of their, their own folks. Right. The same thing is true here. We are not filled with a lot of enthusiasm about giving green cards, you know, it's a work permit here, right. to people who can fill jobs that ordinarily an American could fill. If you have, have some high specialty, like, uh, you know, removing uh, a certain portion of the brain, and there's no, you know, that, that we're going to welcome you with open arms, you get a green card instantly. But you come in and you say, well, I'm a, a laborer, I can lay brick, uh, who needs you? we got a lot of laborers in this country. I think the same thing is true here. You're not bringing any great skill to this this. Uh, this mix. Okay. I, don't, I don't mean that to, to denigrate what you're oh, doing. I understand. I understand. And I'm just doing this to, you know, better my Spanish. And mm -hmm. and I, I accepted the position, so there was no problem there. And, it, you know, it was easy to get the jobs. It's just now the problem getting the working visa. Mm -hmm. Well, the, 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 the same thing. I mean, I don't, now, I'm not recommending this because I don't know how they handle things there. Right. I mean, we are pussycats in this country. And there's no, you know, why do you think you have so many illegals in this country? Because we don't do anything about it. The right. most we say is go on home or we'll put you on a bus right. or something. So the, the, and what a lot of people do when they come in here when they can't get a card, what do they do? They get a, they get a, uh, uh, student visa or a visitor's visa or whatever and they go and they work. Right. Well, I mean, see, I know I could do that, you know, and, and work as, a, as far as, you know, teaching English on the side and, and make money that way. Mm -hmm. But I just, I'd really like to work for these clubs and. Well, you could work for the club the same way, I suppose, illegally. Well, I, I don't know but, how that would work. But, well, I don't know how well, I don't know what the, the how it would work. They put you to work and they pay you. Right. What the penalties are is a whole different matter. I don't know the answer to that. They said in this country, phew, I mean, we just we just laugh at the matter of them. And then we go out the was a couple years ago and say, well, if you've been here long enough, you've been crooked long enough, we'll make you a legal citizen. Somehow, or other, that rubs right. against my grain as well. Uh, but that's. You know, personal personal point of view. Okay. But uh, if the pay, I would. But I would want to know before I did that is what are the penalties? I mean, they send you home. Well, no big that, problem there. Right. If they throw you in the, in, into their version of the Bastille for a couple of years, huh, that'd be a nightmare. I, I'd give that a lot of thought. That's right. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay, kid. Goodbye. Oh, the the uh, immigration laws in this country. I mean, now I know that's going to excite a lot of people, get them angry, but it's true. I mean. Why did we pass the laws? If the laws were, shouldn't be there, then maybe we ought to repeal the laws. But, I mean, we have a, a constant stream of, of undocumented. That's the operative term now. We don't say illegal because that has a nasty ring. Undocumented. I'm an undocumented thief. You know, when I go into the, into the, into the uh, store with my gun, I don't understand. But we have to always just figure up terms to make things more palatable. Nobody's an illegal undocumented. Whew. Tacoma, Washington, hello. Hi, Bruce. Hello there. How are you? I am very well, thank you. What's up? Oh, well, I put in for a job application on Monday, and the job looks very promising. Oh, wait a minute. You put in for an application, or I you put, put an, an application, application in? Right. Oh, okay. And I spoke with the owner. 
Uh-huh. And what kind of a job are we looking for? Yeah, I'm a hairdresser. All right. And anyhow, everything sounds just fine, but I want me, uh, for myself to stick in his mind so he remembers me for you know when the position becomes available. So I was thinking about um, writing him a little thank you note. That's and, always good form when you apply for a position. Yeah. Always good form. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I was wondering if you could help me out with a few words. Well, all you're going to say is what is true. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting with you last Tuesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really enjoyed getting to know you, and after talking with you, uh, I'm thoroughly persuaded that I can be of I can be of assistance to you, and it's a position that I would really like to. uh, have available to me. Mm-hmm. While I recognize right now there are no openings, I'd be very grateful if you would remember uh, our conversation, and when an opening does occur, please contact me. Okay. That's all. All right. At least, the, and that'll set you apart. An awful lot of people have come in there, and they're come and gone, and you never see them again. Right. Okay. Good luck, hon. Thank you. Take good care. You too. I'm just thinking, the last time I was in, I don't do much interviewing anymore, but I must have interviewed... Two and a half dozen people, and I don't recall one this last trip writing back. Interesting. Clearwater, hello. Hi. Hello there. I'm sure some people said, well, nobody wanted to work for you. <laughs> that wasn't quite the way. Yes, what's on your mind? Um, hi. Hey, Clearwater, what's happening? Oh, nothing. Let's do it, kid. What's on your mind? <laughs> Not too much. I just have a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I go to the junior college here. All right. And... Um, right now I have 15 hours. You mean your 15 semester hours? Right. That's what, you're, ta- that's what you're carrying, right? Right. That's a full load. Yeah, that is a full load. All right. And my dad decided that he won't pay for me to go anymore. How come? Because, well, he thinks I'm not being serious about school. But I am, really. Well, let's and talk I'm... about your grade point index. Let's let me kind of uh, be an indicator of your seriousness. Um, well, I have like a 2.8. No, that's not bad. That's a B minus. Right, and I study and everything, but he just thinks, I don't know, he thinks I like kind of goof around, but I don't really goof around. Well, there's nothing wrong with goofing around. How old are you? I'm 18. Well, there's nothing wrong with goofing around at 18. I know. I mean, you're, you're not, it isn't the highest uh, grade point average I've ever heard of, but it clearly isn't the lowest either. And right. It's, it's certainly acceptable to keep you in school. Right. But see, and I work, too, right? But now that he won't pay for me, um... Yeah. I can't go, and I don't know if I well, should wait start a working. Well, wait a while, wait a while. What's your first name? My, Heidi. Heidi, you can go. Let's start with that premise. I you, what? You can go to school. Right, but see, I can't pay for it Yes, anymore. you can. And you're going to work. Now, it's not going to be easy, Heidi, but please don't tell me it can't be done because there have been millions before you that have done it. Right. Now, how much does it cost to go to junior college where you are? Um, it's about, well, the classes cost about 380 380 bucks. Uh-huh, and now, then the books. All right, another 200 Right. Five eighty, six hundred dollars that's per semester, right? Right. It's a hundred bucks a month. Ah, it's hundred and fifty dollars. Let's make it. Let's make it a four month semester. Okay. Now, you, is your father going to allow you to still live at home? Yeah, he'll let me live here and everything, but he just wants to make sure that I'm serious about school. Heidi, can you not tell me that an intelligent woman such as yourself can't earn an extra hundred and fifty bucks a month? Now, it may cut down on your wardrobe, well, it may cut down on your social life, right? And it may cut down on a lot of things. But because please, I can't, I th- it's going to be hard for me to work enough hours to make money to go to school and study Heidi, and everything. Heidi, I didn't ask you. It's going to be easy. You have a boyfriend? Sort of. We yeah, can, I do actually. We can give him up right away. <laughs> now you're laughing, Heidi. I, you don't no, hear me smiling. I'm telling you. I know. You're, there's, you could make 150 bucks a month working Saturday and Sunday. But they won't give me financial aid at the college. I didn't ask about financial aid. I, know. I said you can make 150 dollars a month. Working weekends uh-huh. and studying during the week. Now, I know that's not very exciting, and it means you won't be down on a beach, and you won't have that gorgeous tan and all the rest of it. Right. Is it worth it to go to school? Only yes. Heidi can make that decision. Definitely, because I want to transfer to a university. Fine. Heidi, there's no reason why you can't do it. Now, I, I got a feeling, Heidi, mm-hmm. maybe I'm wrong, but I got a feeling there's a little more to your... The, 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 your father didn't just arbitrarily say that, that you're goofing off. You've done something to, to kind of give him the impression or you've done something where it's not impression it's reality uh-huh. that he's not happy with you want to tell me what that is um well that we'll see okay i guess in high school mm-hmm. he just he figured that because my grades weren't really good in high school but okay. i really hated high school all right 
but you're but you're out of high school now. Uh, you, you, you're out of high school, and you, right. and you finished your first semester. Is that correct? Right. Well, because I started in summer. Okay. So you and you got and how and you carry any credits did you carry in the summertime? I carried. Well, I had fifteen. In the summer. Yeah. So you knocked off a whole semester in the summertime. Right, but see, my grades weren't that good. What were they? Well, I had a two. Well, I had the two eight. Well, it's now the, he's still afraid. Well, that a two eight is not a tragedy. I know. It really isn't. It he's isn't. Like really it, wants like. Because he thinks I can't transfer unless I have, like, really good grades. Well, certainly the better grades you have, the better shot you have at transferring to a a, 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 a more desirable school. I don't mm -hmm. think there's any argument about that. Right. And you and uh, you certainly, they, they, most schools will not trans, will not transfer any credit under a 2. They won't transfer right. D's. Right. Oh, you have, to, you have to have C's. Yes, that's right. At a minimum. At a minimum. Right. You have to have usually quality points as well as as well as uh, C's are better. Right. And we there's both, no... We both listen to your show. Uh-huh. All the time. I, 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 maybe there's a Kaiser. Dad listening now? No, he's in the other room. Uh-huh. Well, maybe he's listening in the other room. No, he's watching TV. Well, why don't you tell him to turn the radio on? <laughs> no. Matter of fact, I'm going to go take a break. I'm serious. I'll have a message for your dad. What do you say? Okay. All right. And we're going to take a little time out. When we get back... Hopefully Heidi's father will be listening to the radio, and we'll see what he has. To, if he wants to go on the phone, that's okay too. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, you stand by. Don't you go away? I want to talk to you in a minute. Your dad's going to hear you on the radio. I'm Bruce Williams. This is Talknet. I'm chatting with a young lady in Clearwater, Florida. Heidi, are you still there? Yes, I am. All right, Dad, listening? Yes, he's right here next to me. All righty. Uh, why don't you put your dad on? Okay, hold on. Let me talk to your okay. father. Hello, there. Bruce. Hello there. How are you? Okay. How are you doing? Very well. You have a enterprising and it seems like a very charming daughter. Yes. Uh, maybe I do. maybe economy a little bit too. Yeah, I think so. Okay. She tells me she had a, a two eight GPI in uh, in junior college the last semester, carrying fifteen credits. Is that is that accurate? It's fairly close. Yeah. Okay. Plus C plus D B minus some of that order. Yeah. And I suggested to her there's no reason in the world that she can't earn enough money to go to junior college. And I further suggested to her that maybe there's a little more that you're uncomfortable about than she was willing to share with me. Mm -hmm. But she said that uh, you didn't want to pay the tuition anymore because you weren't persuaded that she was serious. And I was about to maybe propose a compromise. Okay. That, uh, okay, she's going to go for one more semester. And what would you consider to be an acceptable GPI to prove her seriousness? Well, I would think uh, at least a C plus. Well, she's got a C plus. A uh, two eight is a C plus. Yeah, but I mean, considering that she's going to to work, I would I would um, take a little less than you know, a, say a B minus C plus average in that area. Well, if she maintained the two eight, then you'd be happy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we cut a deal, you and me and Heidi? Okay. That you'll pick up the tariff for the next semester. On the condition that she she come home with at least a two seven five, we'll say GPI. Yeah. If it falls below that, she's on her own the next semester. Okay. That would demonstrate her seriousness, and I'm kind of hopeful that we she and I can talk, and then we can con her into maybe a point three. What do you think? Yeah, because I I think Bruce, I think seriously, uh, I'm trying to get her into that realm. You know? Indeed. Yeah. I have no quarrel with that. I've done this route five times. Mm -hmm. But and, she's got to learn that uh, it, you know she's in the big leagues. And she's got to work, and she's got to be able to, uh, you know, put uh -huh. forth the effort to get the grade. Well, she said that she didn't do so well in high school, and I can empathize with that because I did miserably in high school. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, as a matter of fact, I gave new definition to the word miserable when it came to high school because <laughs> I didn't really give much of a damn either about the whole thing. Uh huh. So well, that, I was uh, I was similar too, but I just I think when she has the potential that she should. You know, show it. Absolutely. And well, so far she's done okay with a two eight, mm -hmm. and if she can maintain that two seven five, you'll pick up the tab, and we'll all be happy. Fair enough. That's a good deal. Okay, babe. Let me talk to your daughter just for a moment. Okay. Here, here, Heidi. Thanks, Bruce. All righty. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Heidi. Hi. Okay. We have now your father and I just cut a deal. Were you overlook? Were you listening to it? I was kind of trying to listen, but well, then. here's the deal, honey child. Okay. He's going to pay for your next semester. He's going to what? He's going to pay for your next semester. Oh, he will? But you and Karen are oh going to you and Karen are going to guarantee me that you're going to come up with a 2.75 GPI for that semester. Okay. If you don't, you're on your own the following. Right. I mean, you you can you can Oh, this is great. Though. You can do the dating, the whole routine. But I have to get But you. why don't you shoot for a 3 even, huh? 
Oh, I can try. I don't know. Well, you can try. You're going to have to come up with some fours to balance off the twos. Right. Then it was a really hard computer class I'm no, in. Well, that's all right. But you, you, now listen, I want you to get back to me. Okay. In when you get your next semester's grades, okay. all right? Okay. And if you work the thing out where you come up with that proper GPI, then we got a dozen roses I want to send you. Fair enough? Oh, that's great. Okay, Heidi. <laughs> I'll definitely get it now. To be continued, okay? Okay, thanks a lot. All right, Heidi. Okay. It's been a joy. Thanks. Okay, kid. Bye-bye. Uh, getting through school and getting through parenthood. I'm not sure who I empathize more with, a daughter or a father. I've <laughs> never been a daughter, but I've sure had a couple of them. And they're good people today, and that is a natural fact. Indianapolis, Indiana, it's your turn. Hello there. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing real well, thanks. You're my favorite continuing education program. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, objectivity and advice. Well, thank you. I'm um, considering taking a job. Uh, I'm doing a job search, and some things come up in, a, in sales, and I have a good, strong background in sales and marketing and a graduate degree and good with public relations and, <laughs> and clothes and stuff. So. Okay. And this particular uh, program is one I would be selling a collection service. Okay, that's not uh, unusual. A lot of people do. Okay. They, uh, I'm not real familiar with anyone that does it, and it's like uh, my, I'm always a little wary when I'm... Uh, oh, it's a, it's a perfectly legitimate, not uncommon calling. Okay. People call on businesses and say, we would would like to have a shot at your uncollectibles, and, and you'll work on a percentage in all likelihood. Right. It's a contract basis, mm -hmm. and it, it seems like a good percentage. Uh, repeat business and readers. Sure, and, that's perfectly uh, legit. I mean, I don't know if this particular firm is legitimate. Obviously, so. But as far as the the uh, speaking generically, there are any number of guys that call on our businesses from time to time uh, who would like to get hold of our uncollectibles, and it's a, it's an unusual retail enterprise that doesn't have them. Uh, professionals, physicians, and whatever. And even though you're using someone, uh, a lot of times you say, listen, I'll give a new guy a, a shot. Maybe he can do a little better, get a higher percentage of stuff collected, whatever. As an entrepreneur, uh, what do you look for? I'm looking for results. I'll give you a couple hundred. Collect them for me. Good luck. I'm Bruce Williams for Talk. Detroit, Michigan. Hello there and welcome. Hi, Bruce. How are you? I am well, thank you. What's on your mind? I need some advice. Let us talk. I'm in the market for a condominium. You it, are? Yes. It's my very first piece of property after renting for 10 years. My goodness. Can you say I? Is this you are single, you are married, you are single. what? Single. All right. Talk to me a little bit. How old are you? All good stuff. I am 32 years old. Earning? Earning $45,000 a year. All right. And I found a condominium that... Uh, they're charging $85,000 for it. Okay. Now, my problem... Wait, hold, wait, hold, you said they are charging. They, this, uh, the owners. This Is this new or is this a resale or it's what? It's a resale. And you've agreed on eighty-five grand. Well, no, no, no. Oh, no. Okay, no. no. That's, that's what the, the asking price is. But my concern is there are only two mortgage companies in the Detroit area that will lend money for this property. Why is that? Because... 20, well, 80% of the units in this complex are corporate-owned. Why does that preclude them, or why do they feel it's not a good place to loan money? Well, I work for one of the automotive companies, and we also have a mortgage company. I'm, and I went to the mortgage company, and they said that their fear is that since 80% are corporate-owned, those corporations are looking to write off a depreciation. So they are worried that the condominium association, or the, I'm sorry, that the corporations will not take care of the condominiums. Well, it's nonsense, because the corporations don't have anything to do with caring for them except the interior. Right. The exterior is done by the association. Okay, that's what I thought. If they are paying their monthly Maintenance association fee. fee. Sure. Okay. But, I mean, I, I don't understand, but now there must be more to this. Then, then uh, I mean, I don't want to see you go out and, and do something precipitous right. here. What what occurs to me might be the situation. I said might be. Mm -hmm. Is they're more afraid that the corporations might dump, okay, and put a whole bunch of units on the on the market at one time, which would depreciate the price. Now, how many units are there in the building? In the building, there are eight units. Well, in, in the in the project, then, or you want to call it? In the pro in the project, there are six. I would say fifty to sixty buildings. And eight condominiums in each building. Right, round number is 500 units. Right. And they're saying that of the 500 units, 80%? That's correct. 
400 are owned by companies. Right. What do they own them for? Well, there's a lot of um, well transient people coming in and out of the city of Detroit for automotive and other. All right, so like a uh, not necessarily, but like a General Motors might own a bunch of these things. Right. So when they're bringing in uh, a new engineer from West Undershirt, sure. they got a place for him to stay. That is not unheard of either. That's not unusual. If, it, if it's cheaper than renting, right. uh, in, in New York City here, the building Bill lived in, um, Bill does live in. There were a whole ton of people. I, it doesn't really matter, but the, uh, a company was doing a corporate relocation, and they, they rented for a long period of time apartments because people were coming and going for their company. It was just cheaper to do that than, than a club in hotel rooms and whatever, right. and certainly better for the employees. Yeah. That in itself wouldn't distress me. What would... What happened? What has happened? And you got to be aware, aware of this when it comes to, particularly condos and, and co-ops today. The um, the tax act of '86 disrupted that market considerably. Uh, a lot of people were investing in single units. They buy one or two to rent out, mm -hmm. and they could take the depreciation and they could charge the losses off against income and all the things that that a lot of folks were doing, taking advantage of of the tax laws as they stood. Then they come along with this the reform in 86, which made passive losses much less desirable and in many cases uh, non-existent. And as a consequence, these investors started dumping. You can't make any money here. We're losing money, and, and we don't get any tax advantage. Let me get out. Well, that becomes a little troublesome, you see. Uh, and that's the condominium market is very soft around the country just now. It, and it is, really is, out in this area that I'm looking well, at. Well, a lot of that is because of the tax reform. Reform, I use that word somewhat uh, advisedly. And maybe it's a good thing. They say you gotta, the deal has got to stand on its own. How much were these units selling for two years ago? Well, I don't have that information, but I looked at the market. There was one that sold the same type that I'm looking at that sold uh, two weeks ago for 77 And they want 85 They want 80, 85 nine. Mm -hmm. So I put in a bid at 77 and they're counter-offering. Hmm. Are there, are there others for sale? There's only one other for sale. Are you really stuck on this one? See, I, what, what bothers me, what's your first name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, what bothers me here is when you're telling me that all of the people lending money in Detroit, only two of them want to loan on these apartments, right. i got to believe there's something. they know something I don't know. That, would, that, that would bother me. They, uh, My mortgage company said that it seems as though that the two other mortgage companies have all the information on this particular condo complex. Mm. That doesn't answer our question, does it? No, no. I would want to dig a lot further before I invested. Okay. When everybody's running the other way and I'm running upstream, I know. I got to ask myself, what do they know? I don't know because every time I've, I've, I've not every time. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you really, you know, they say the smart money buys on bad news and sells on good news. But the, many times when I, I find myself flying in the face of all convention, one of two things, I either make a lot of money or I get, <laughs> a lot. Or I get hemorrhaging. That's right. Well, do you think that I should contact the Condominium Association and talk with them about well, it? Well, certainly you can see what they have to say. You ought to talk to one of the other mortgage companies too, not just the one you're you're plugged into. Okay. And ask why they they just they, they had this um, for la, for lack of a better way of putting it, blackballed. Sure. Because that if there's 25 companies and only two of them want to do business, mm -hmm. somehow or other, Mary, I I would be very very reticent to uh, to move without knowing something right. very definitive. Let's face it. The market is soft right now. Yes. If you don't buy this one, there's another one around the corner someplace else on a different project. That's why I'm not panicking. And exactly so. There's no reason for you to panic. Right. I mean, some of the real estate go, oh, this is a hot market. Yeah, it's a hot market. <laughs> yeah. And you lie a lot, too. <laughs> well, thank I, you. I, I'd walk softly, dear. Okay. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Bye -bye. It's been a joy. Bye-bye. And one of these days, hopefully, we're going to get to Detroit. By golly, I'm, and i got to talk to Fritz up there. We've been in almost every major city in the country. Detroit is one of the exceptions. I will be uh, doing a couple of shows in Michigan between now and the end of the year, but not in Motor City. I'm kind of hopeful to get one up there one day. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around. This is TalkNet. Pittsburgh, PA, thank you so much for your patience. What can I do for you? Hi, Bruce. I listened to your show on KQV here in Pittsburgh. Yes, indeed. I give them a plug, too. Well, you, by golly, is a dynamite station. Right. 
Okay, uh, kind of a unique situation here. I work for a software development firm that uh, has a very highly specialized niche market, and um, our management, uh, we used to be the number one in sales in our field, and now we've been outstripped by some of our competitive firms. Mm, our management's happened? trying to catch up to them. Is, what, what's the problem? Well, uh, our, our was it, package has become obsolete. And we got kind of complacent and weren't developing new stuff, huh? That's right. And uh, that's part of the problem. It's, they've instituted uh, employee study groups where they analyze a problem and um, come up with recommendations, and they haven't always followed them. Well, I'm in one of these groups currently. <laughs> what else is new? Yeah. Well, you know, they're kind of uh, cutting off their nose to spite their face, but ours... I, I believe that our report and presentation is going to be extremely critical of our upper level management. And, uh, you know, how do you, have we're to gonna... sign, do you have to sign this thing? What's that? <laughs> do you have to sign this or can we send it anonymously? Well, we all have to present it. And, um, well, who, you know, who? that's something we're, you know, how would you recommend oh. we sell this thing to them? <laughs> Are they going to listen to it? Who? Very well. Well, like, let's start with a given. Okay. These, these guys know that they screwed up. They got to know that if you're number one, and all of a sudden your number, we don't, we can't find your number. Somebody screwed up. Now, are the same guys there that made the decisions? Uh, there's, there's been a slight reorganization up there, but uh, Not nothing major. Same this warm is, bodies, basically. Yeah, this is like who's going to bell the cat? Yeah. And and, and you know the the the, the uh, smart guys just say, "Not me." Yeah. Would you? I think this this is going to strain diplomacy, it would seem to me. Yeah. You're going to have to find a way to stay, say, this is what's happened uh -huh. with nobody coming out looking like they're a loser. Right. And uh, here's where we are today through nobody's fault, but there is a bright spot at the end of the tunnel because we can all see now, you can even start the thing off with 2020 hindsight, we wouldn't have this problem. Right, but uh, we, but who could be, ex you know, who could have been expected to see that this? Even though you know, doggone well, they should have seen it. Right. Who could have expected to see this? Yeah, you have to come up with a preamble, as I'm telling you, take them off the hook. Right. Yeah, because they haven't done any thorough market analysis, and the employee morale at the place is the pit. Well, yeah, but the last drove. What that? The, the last thing you want to say, though, the very last thing you're going to say. Is uh, oh my goodness! Uh, you guys blew it. Though. You didn't. You didn't have enough R and D. Mm -hmm. You were complacent, and now everybody is uh, the, the rats are abandoning the ship, and so forth. It's all your fault because you don't have to worry about abandoning it. They'll burn your ship. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're going to have to make them look good, and that's not going to be easy. But that's what you're going to have to do. Okay. The beginning of the report is going to have to make them blameless. Okay. And then the rest of it's going to have. But here is the way we can get out of this morass that's of nobody's. Nobody architected this thing. Okay. Ain't going to be easy. As I said, if you pull this off, then we're going to make you ambassador to some third world nation. <laughs> I would hope so. I wish you well, kid. Okay. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around. This is TalkNet. By golly, it's Cape Girardo, Missouri. Hello there. Yes, hello. Hi. How are you doing? Everything is just fine, thank you. I would like to say, first of all, I love your program. Unfortunately, I missed you when you were in Alaska because I was down here. That's where I'm from. You're from Alaska? Yes, 18 years up there. From Fairbanks? No, from Anchorage. Anchorage. I was up there about a year ago in Fairbanks a couple of weeks ago. Oh, they're both wonderful. Oh, I love are. the whole thing. I must tell you, the, and maybe you've been there for 18 years. Uh, yes, I was. Is it, is it my imagination, or are people there just a bit more gracious than many other places? Oh, I... I loved it when you said that last night. They are. I went through culture shock when I came down to Missouri uh, a year ago, exactly. Um, it's, it's really interesting, and I travel enough to... I mean, that doesn't mean other places have not been gracious to me, because that would be, be ingenuous and we, it would, would be not be true. But I just sensed a, 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 a feeling of, 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 of camaraderie, I guess. I think that isn't even what I'm looking for. Just a, gee, we're glad to have you around kind of thing. Real real laid back, and yeah. they, they don't really, they let you do what you want to do as long as it doesn't infringe on them. Exactly um, so. My and, personal theory is because they all, they all have the uh, wherewithal to pick up from whatever state they were in and go to Alaska. It takes a little bit different kind of person, doesn't it? So many people yeah. are are just afraid to go more than two miles from where they're born. That's which, true. Which is kind of a tragedy. And that's an area I'm in right now. 
What's going on? Um, well, it has to do with my coming down from Alaska to Missouri. Um, I came down here to manage rental property for my brother-in-law and my oldest sister. Uh -huh. um, now, I made this decision a year ago. Uh, it was a one-year commitment. I made it when I was emotionally screwed up, so to speak. <laughs> what? I got to ask you, open the door to that one. Since then, everything's changed. What, um, what was going on that, that you had a re, kind of re, re restaurant? I got to believe there's a man involved. No, no. No? No. No. Shocking. That was one of the first things to go. Um, well, I mean, there was a, was it divorce or something of that nature? No. Um, drugs and alcohol, and uh -oh. I gave up on all that, and I, uh -huh. I, um. How old are you? 24. Okay, my goodness, you got to do it early, huh, kid? Well, yeah. Um, All right. But anyhow, I, I made this decision at a time when, you know, I was under emotional duress, and since then I've made many changes in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I've cleaned up. I went back to school after dropping out nine years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I maintained this job and another job, and I still ended up with a 4.0. Mm, terrific. That right. right, is terrific. I, I just, I can't believe I could do such a thing. Well... In the meantime, I am trying to keep this ball rolling. My sister and her husband will be down here in about three weeks. Just... Down, down from where are they? Oh, they're in Alaska. I see. Right. What are they doing with property in in uh, Missouri? They're from Alaska. A retirement investment, but they work for the union now, so they're up there getting vested again to bring the money to Missouri. I see. Okay. Bad news if you're an Alaskan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At any rate, um, they're going to be down here, and they'll be staying in my home while they're interviewing people for the new manager's position because I'll be leaving in December. Oh, you're bailing out, huh? I'm leaving to go to Florida and get married in... <laughs> <laughs> Alaska to Florida. Go ahead. Yes. Um, you are a globetrotter. I have. I realized I made this decision. It was a poor decision, but it was the best I could do. Well, you did it, and you you stuck it out for a yeah. year. So what, what, what do you have to regret? I don't see where we're going with it. Well, what I regret is that, for one... Um, Aside from the professional difficulties we have, the fact that they're relatives obviously is a problem, and, and I've changed very much, and they don't accept that change very well. Um, That's unfortunate. It is. They, they're, you know, bad-mouthing my fiancé. Um, is there a reason to? No, not at all. They've never met him. <laughs> well, what are they saying? What? They say he manipulates me because I finally stand up for myself and say no, and that's where the big problem comes in. Well, what is it you say no to? I say no to um, doing extras as far as work goes, since I'm very pressed for time. They want me to do extra things, personal things for them, with no compensation. Such and as? It's such as... Um, they don't want to change their mailing address for all their credit cards because they think it'll be a hassle, so they want me to pick up their mail every week, sort through it, send it to them as it gets there, so that would mean going to the post office six days a week. And when I ask for compensation, gas, you know, I'm a student, I'm struggling, I need the money. Mm -hmm. um, well, gosh, we really can't afford it, but, you know, it, you, you know, at the end of the year, maybe we'll give you a little bit, and, and that, as far as I'm concerned, is an empty promise. My problem is they're going to be here in the house. In your house? At my house. We're all going to be under the same roof. We all? I take it you're living with your boyfriend? No, I live alone. Okay. He's in Florida right now. So the three of you, how long is that going to be that they're going to be living with you? Three weeks. Well, you listen, you do three weeks stand on your head. Um, this, I, is, this is going to be a test of your, your, your new maturity. Mm -hmm. Well, that, I, I just don't understand how if I should handle it as strictly business because it's family. Still your sister. That's right, and I have sisters. I have eight sisters. Whew, eight sisters? Yes. Nine? How many boys in the family? Three. Twelve kids? Yes. Those long nights in Alaska, huh? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> A lot Boy. of darkness, you know. I guess. Um, I just don't want a situation to come up where I have three sisters in my family that refuse to speak to anyone but my mother. Why is that? Uh, because they didn't handle these kind of similar situations. All right, so look, you're, right. you're a big girl now, and you're mm -hmm. about to prove it. You're going to have to maybe swallow hard, and and right. and, and things that that maybe uh, should escape your lips are not going to be able. Three weeks, twenty one days, <laughs> you can handle that. I hope so. There's, I, there's no reason why you can't. Really. I, I guess if I think about the last ten months, I can. There you go. <laughs> this is a test of your maturity. I imagine so. All right. I'll pull through. Thank you, Bruce. Good luck, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Ah, you know, they're, they're, 
it's just kind of foolish if you can possibly avoid burning bridges with relatives because you know you have disagreements, but they still you never get another sister, you never get another mother or father. Course Gold, California. Hello there. Hello, Bruce. Hi. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. What's happening? Well, I just called to. Uh, I am making fairly good money, and I have sixty, eighty thousand dollars in in uh, a mutual fund, which is doing tremendous. But as the market approaches the same levels it was two years ago, I find in reading articles here and there that that there is some concern. And now, if you're going to ask me what the market's going to do. Well, I'm not. You're asking the wrong guy. I'm not. I uh, I have a couple hundred dollars a week, ten, fifteen thousand a year. I got to put somewhere, and I'm interested in buying silver, physical silver. Well, it's certainly out there for sale. Uh, the, and que the question is, are you going to buy junk or are you going to buy bars? Bars. Why? Oh, I've bought ten ounce Engelharts for some time. Yeah. And I'm wondering if that's a good way to cover my hindsight. Well, there's, there are arguments for and against metals. The, the, the telling argument against is that metal does not pay interest, and it, has, it requires storage, safe storage, which costs. Silver in particular, in that it's much bulkier than gold, because silver is going for, what, between 6 and $7 an ounce? I don't even remember anymore. Well, and the market's 509. 5? Five? 509. All right, and then gold is at 3, what, 50 or 60? Yeah. So you can see you got a, a, a heck of a storage problem when you put very much money into silver. On the other side of that, metals are a hedge against disaster. Now the I I, I don't know that, that silver or gold which which of those metals would be your choice, and I'm not I can probably make an argument for both. Well, but, the way it, the way it sounds, what you're saying is uh, maybe I ought to buy gold. Well, gold is easier to handle, is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, just take the, well, it, it, if it's five, and I haven't followed silver, frankly, and it's my deficiency, but let's assume that you're right. That would be um, 60, 70 ounces of silver around numbers, or 73, really, for one ounce of gold, right? Right. Well, 73 ounces is, is, a, is a fair substantial amount of metal to hide someplace or store someplace. I never thought about it from that standpoint. It's, it's but there isn't any reason that I couldn't buy gold rather than silver. Well, you, but the, but no, wait a minute though. There's it's not quite that simple to, uh, an equation because there, when when silver moves a couple three pennies, that's a bigger move than gold moving in this instance a dollar. Yeah, I suppose it. it so, and I don't know which is better, but I'm just trying to point out that these are things that you should be aware of. Well, it was. I guess what I'm calling for then is, is it wise to to think the way I'm thinking? Well, the smart money says, and I'm not saying that, that I, I, I'm not telling you that I do this or that I don't, uh, and I certainly am not telling you I recommend or not, but the smart money says if you have, if you're looking to hedge, about 10% of your money could be in metals. Or in your home, you'd have three days to take a hike. It's federal law. But when it's sold on the, their premises, that means you went there. Uh, at least in theory, nobody put a gun to your head. Nobody lassoed you, hog tied you, or otherwise made you go there. You went under your own power, and they were good enough to sell you. They were good. Well, definitely. welcome. Uh, no pun intended. Maybe there is. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> you, I think you're in, kid. Uh, so, the Okay, well, that's what I figured. I kind of figured that's what you were going to say, but I thought I'd better call you and let you know or, or find out for sure. I um, must did finally get, a, get to talk to the manager of the place today. Yeah, what did he say? And Did they ever tell you there was a money-back guarantee or any of that kind? Yeah. What did they say? Well, after you spend your first 3000 you're guaranteed to have made your... Oh, uh, after. I, well, wait a minute. I'm, go spend 3000 and they'll, they'll, they'll have made much more money. What I want to know is, did, was there any money-back guarantee? Oh, no. They never said, when you pay your money, it's paid, right? Right. When you They're pay. saying if you spend 3000 bucks or more, you'll you'll have saved this amount of money. You'll have saved that, and if you haven't, then they will pay you back hmm. the difference. But they're going to show you how you saved it. 
Well, they said it's kind of up to you if you want to try and prove it with uh, sale ads and such, mm -hmm. too. So you could be pretty... Uh, ads won't do it. They're going to want something more definitive than an ad. I'll bet you. You're, you're probably right, because I brought that up to him today. Like, he said, don't worry about it. We'll take yeah. care of it. It's like these guys with the car ads. If you can buy this car any cheaper, we'll, one dollar, we'll pay you. We'll, we'll pay you. Give you the new car. And then we'll fine print. You know, We reserve the right to buy the car and so on and so forth, or if we can't beat, meet or beat, well, heck, if you can meet or beat, why don't you come up with a price today? Why have, you got to, why have I got to go somewhere else to get the lowest price? Right. And it's a big deal, so you met the price. We'll beat it. We'll give you a nickel. Lo People want to be suckered. They do. People want to think they're getting a big bargain. Well, I've got it tattooed on my forehead now. Well, listen, you and me together, but it's true. Most people would much prefer to, you, you go into jewelry stores, uh, particularly in uh, heavily traveled tourist areas, all right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see all these gold bracelets laying there, and every one of them is 50%. I never saw anybody sell them at, at, at the regular price. It's always 50% off, regularly $2,000, 1000 bucks, regularly 1500 and so forth. I never have I ever seen one that wasn't on sale because people want to say, boy, I got myself a $1,000 bracelet here. What you got was you got a four hundred dollar bracelet and you paid five hundred bucks for it. Right. But people want to be suckered, and as long as people want that, there'll be people out there that will make suckers of us. So this is just a seven hundred dollar lesson. Seems to me. Are there any um, times when I actually will get a bargain? Do you think? I would doubt it. I would suspect that you could go to your major malls in your area and the discount stores, and do just as well. Now, there may be an exception to that. There may be an exception occasionally. Occasionally, but 700 bucks worth? Well, see, I, I went immediately to the store, like my wife said, and we priced about eight items, Yeah. called and tried to find out uh, what the prices were. Right. Well, it took them three days to get back to me. With the how, were the, how were the comparisons? Oh, within a couple of bucks. <laughs> um... Some were not available, or they just can't get them from that company. Or but they weren't that much cheaper. None that I've seen so far. And One that was a little cheaper uh, was a refrigerator, about a hundred bucks cheaper. But that was before shipping and handling, et cetera. And <laughs> You're right back to where you began. Exactly. And how many refrigerators can you buy in the course of a year? Well, and the hey. thing is, can you wait three weeks for one too? You need Listen, it today. You learned a lesson. Well, I hope somebody else learns one out of this. Because okay. <laughs> I know the feeling, my friend. Good luck. Well, thank you, Bruce. Could have been worse. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Duluth, Minnesota. It's your turn. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Well, I have an interesting problem. The uh, airport authority is trying to buy me out. Uh, the property was zoned last year. Uh, so that no one could be in here, but we were grandfathered in. Well, in other words, what, what did they zone it at? Airport? Say again? What did they zone it? Airport? Uh, I don't remember the wording, but there's a zone A and a zone B. What it amounts to is they don't want people off the end of the runways in case one doesn't well, quite make I it. I think that's a reasonable, a reasonable position. And what you're telling me is that you use the word grandfather. I believe the correct term is non. You're a non-conforming use. Uh huh. But it would seem to me that if you're, at, are you actually on the end of a runway someplace? Yes, I could uh, hit them with a rocks if I wanted to. And they take red off over your head? Uh, more or less. No, that, that's not. That wasn't my question. Either you, they do or they don't. More well, or less, don't I'm get about, it. I'm about 4,000 feet off the end of the runway and directly under their flight path. Well, 4,000 feet is not exactly... Uh, if somebody aborts a landing and skids off the end of the runway, they're not going to skid 4,000 feet. Well, no. Uh, they're talking about the other way as they're coming in if they don't make it to the runway. Well, that's conceivable. I could have 4,000 foot shortfalls. A heck of, and, and I'm going to tell you it doesn't happen, but it does. But a shortfall... Uh, you know, the, at 4,000... You're 4,000 feet out. You're still... Well, actually, zone A is over five thousand feet deep. In I, any no, case, no, I was just thinking in terms of the of the of the approach altitude. That's all. Go ahead. Um, what my question was: There's a federal program, uh, relocation program, mm -hmm. that claims they're going to do lots of things for me. Uh, fair market value, 
Well, who's, well, let's go back. Are they, it, it, who is operating the airport? Is it a county, a state, a, probably a county, a um, city? Well, it's in the Duluth city limits, perhaps. Uh, who operates it? You, it should be easy to figure out. Don't you know who operates your airport, Sirius? No, I guess I don't. Well, that's the first thing to find out, because those are the people you got to deal with, I would assume. Well, actually, no. Why? The, the airports themselves have hired a consulting group from someplace down south well, yeah. to do all their talking and their legal maneuvering for them. All right. Uh, in any case, we qualify for uh, this program yeah. because it's uh, a federal law that requires us not to be here. Okay. In any case... Well, what's the problem? Well, I'm concerned because it sounds as though uh, just too much is going to go our way. But they're talking up to $22,000 above and beyond purchase price. I mean, I mean actual price, the value before this all began? Uh, well, actually, they, they claim that it's the value assuming that the airport weren't there. That's right. Exactly so. And uh, how else would you do it? If you're if you're in the middle of the turnpike, I mean your house is worth nothing. So you figure the value, what the value would have been, had the turnpike not been a reality. Right. All right. So how much is your house worth? Uh, we're guessing right around thirty. They're supposed to send up a couple of people to uh, assign a value to it, right. and we can, if we wish, hire a third. All right. Fine. On them. Okay. So they, you want to conclude this as quickly as you're able. 30, and they want to give you a, uh, a percentage over that 30, I take it. Well, apparently it's the difference between the value of our house and what they think it's going to cost us to, to buy another house in the same category. All right. Also, they're supposedly required to find us for possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, how, many, how many properties are involved here? In the area, 17. Well, that's not that many. So you got to find 60, 65 houses on, on the market someplace, which shouldn't be too hard to do. You know, hand the list. That's four, four per row. They got, I actually, we'd have to have that many because it doesn't mean four times. You can only buy one. The three left over, they can go back into inventory again. Right. I don't see. See, here's my problem with the whole thing, all right? You're very uncomfortable with this whole thing, right? I'm just concerned that I... Uh it well, isn't as good as it sounds. Well, then you ought to hire an attorney. You're being condemned. That's what it comes down to. It's They're using uh, the powers of eminent domain to take your house, as they should. House shouldn't doesn't belong in that close to an end of a runway and so forth, and you don't want to be there. So that's fine. But you, you should be able to find yourself an attorney who is familiar with condemnation law and the rest of this stuff. Now... I did. And? Uh, he told me that I should wait until they'd made me a written offer. Well, and are you doing that? <sighs> yes and no. I'd prefer to have him on hand throughout the whole thing, but he doesn't seem to think it's necessary. Well, there's there's nothing going to happen until they make a written offer. Let him make it. Well, yes. Uh, what else? Can... They're going to survey the property. Well, they're going to have two matter. different... It doesn't matter. They're just collecting data. Okay. There's no way you can get hurt by that. They're doing a survey. Want to be certain the property is where it's supposed to be and so on and so forth. They're going to get a couple of, of uh, estimates as to the uh, the value based upon comparables and all that sort of good stuff. Nothing wrong with that. They'll probably come out and take some pictures too. Nothing wrong with that. But until they, get, until they make the first overture, we're going to give you so many dollars. Uh, your attorney is correct. There's nothing more than you can do. And then you have to decide whether you'll accept that number or reject that number or negotiate. Now, once you get it, let's assume they offer you the 30000 right? Mm -hmm. That's called easy money. The attorney, in my opinion, or your negotiator, shouldn't get any part of that thirty grand. That was the easy money. It was right on the table. Right. But the rest of the money, everything over thirty, is called hard money. That's where they'll get a percentage. I'm not talking about 10% either. Much higher percentage because that's the hard money. The money is not on the table. They got to go out and get that money for you. Right now, they don't get a percentage of, of uh, relocation programs. That's additional, but we're just talking about the the uh, extra money over above the first offer. And there's almost always more money in there after the first offer. I see. That's called the hard money. Okay. Well, thank you. Good luck, my friend. 
I hope I don't need it. Oh, I'm, listen, no, good luck never hurt anybody, I'll tell you. I keep <laughs> telling you, I'd rather be lucky than skillful any time. I have been through condemnation. It was not a pleasant experience. At least in my state, the uh, the deck is very much stacked against the person being condemned, and there's nothing wrong with eminent domain. The uh, There's nothing, nothing at all wrong with, with the idea of... Uh, progress otherwise we wouldn't have any airports or roads or whatever but altogether too many times the person that is uh, owns the property winds up with a, a very short end or a stinky end of the stick it does require an expert good attorneys you got to deal with it. i'm bruce williams this is talk Net. hello there lansing what's on your mind oh hi i'm uh, glad i got through well, i'm pleased that you did too yeah, I could really use some advice. I've listened to you for a long time, and you all seem like you've got some good advice for most people. Well, thank you very much. Anyway, I guess uh, I'm an aspiring inventor. You've probably yeah. heard from a few of us. One, uh, two, once in a while. Yeah, and I've come up with uh, what I'm sure will be a fantastic new product, yes. like everyone uh, thinks uh, they've come up with when uh, they're an aspiring inventor. Yeah. I think uh, nearly everyone worldwide will want to own one. I think it'll be bigger than Rubik's Cube and all like that. At least. Uh, at least. Uh, but uh, the problem is this. Uh, I've got the product concept uh, and the design down on paper in great detail. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's completely workable. All right. But uh, without a working model, uh, I wonder uh, where do I go from here? Can you tell me what the product is? Well, certainly if I think it's, it's going to be that big, I don't want to... Well, know, I don't want to discredit, but... Have yeah. else, uh, but, I mean, are we in the Rubik's Cube thing? Are we building something that's well, a new piston for a reciprocating engine? I mean... Well, it's, uh, is it a it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun and challenging and spellbinding like the cube, but it's also uh, going to be extremely educational. It's a novelty of some kind, though. Yeah, it's a novelty of some kind, somewhere across between a game and, and an educational tool. Right. I think it'll be both in homes fun enough for, for kids to play with and get educated at the same time, and maybe okay. even in the schools. All right. I mean, I, you know, as opposed to, you know, a new crankshaft. Yeah, yeah, the All right. person cranks you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I just got a bond of feel for what we're talking about. Uh huh. But uh, like I say, me, I, I'm. I think that. Uh, I think that actually to bring it to life, it's going to require a, a, someone with a working knowledge of electronics to create uh, some basic circuitry and uh, a minor computer program uh, needed to, like I say, bring it to life. And I don't have any expertise uh, in electronics. Well, and it's, it's time you have to do one of two things. Hire or make uh, try to bring in someone as a working partner. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was uh, yeah, considering that. Uh, in fact, I was actually uh, considering taking uh, some courses in electronics so I could uh, create the working model myself. That's the hard way. Yeah. That's yeah. truly the hard way. Yeah, and it would, hey, can I interrupt just for yeah, a minute? Yeah, go ahead. You know, this we, we're this is a big time radio network here, right? Uh huh. Big time radio network, you know, with with all kinds of fancy. Four guys just walked in in their underwear. You believe that? <laughs> our, our 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 fearless leader, Dick Brennan, Dick Richard Brennan, who I've always thought pretty well of up until now. These four, they, they went there. Another, there must be a virus in this area. Last weekend, Sheila. Uh, ran in the, in the Legs Marathon, and now Dick and, and his brother and some friends just came in. They were in some kind of a bank. Big. What is this 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 disease? Everybody has to go running around scantily clad. Well, it's summertime. Is that what it is? Yeah. I think How hot does it get before they take it all off? Uh, you're you're waiting. Uh, yeah. Well, not for them. No, that they, just they, for Sheila. When they were well, for Sheila, not so bad. But these guys, I'm, I'm really. It's it's embarrassing that they, that, that executives act like this. Really. I know, and you know, you know, in my generation of executives doesn't behave like this. All right, I, I, I just you suggest that I, maybe I, 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 I just, I just hope that the powers that be are, are listening to this, and we, we, we're going to have to have a meeting about decorum. I really mean that. I mean, you know, you ever see a guy anyway? Okay, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I mean, I was shocked to see these sweaty bodies in the control room. Go ahead. Okay, you suggested maybe hiring someone. That uh, idea well, crossed my the, mind. The too, choice but. is hire or get a partner with the expertise that you lack. Uh huh. Now, it's a lot cheaper to go to second route. Uh huh. If I did get a partner, or if I hired someone, well, yeah. uh, to uh, create the working model, uh, I don't know. It just seems to me that, uh, like I say, just some 
basic electronics, what, what does partnership involve? Would uh, they end up receiving the lion's share of the profits for the creation of the product or well, even stealing well, the product well, from me altogether? Well, first of all, don't get paranoid about being stolen from, all right? Uh -huh. Every inventor in the world walks around, you know, with a shotgun in his pocket because somebody's going to steal from him. Yeah. First of all, if it's any good, yes, it'll get stolen. Let's start with that. Uh huh. You mentioned Rubik's Cube before as an example. How many people stole that? Yeah, yeah. If it's good, it'll be swiped. It'll be knocked off. Uh-huh. You just hope you get your piece is all you're looking. That's all you're going to get. Uh-huh. I don't care if it's a beanie or the propeller. Somebody's going to steal it. Now, as to the, the who gets what share, that's a matter of you're pretty much in the driver's seat, seat there to the extent that you interview people, this is what I want to get done, and you decided the ground rules. Mm-hmm. And the question is, can you get somebody to, to go with those ground Is somebody interested? that has the ability, and then we get into negotiation, don't we? But even at that point, once uh, you're discussing uh, uh, the, the possibilities, previous to such discussions, is it possible to get a, a product's basic concept uh, patented without a working model? Well, you don't, I, don't, I don't think you ever have to work with a working model. Uh -huh. that's, that's, I think that's gone. Well, uh, I mean, so far as... Uh, Getting just the idea or, or the concept. Well, of, for uh, example, on the for, look, look, for example, you cannot patent a perpetual motion machine. Uh huh. You've got to have something to prove that it works. Yeah, sure. Now, I this is something to discuss with a patent attorney. Uh huh. But you know, again, you're. I, I understand where you're. How old are you? Uh, thirty-five. Okay, I understand that you're you're paranoid about somebody stealing from you, but you really. I mean, and, and that paranoia may be to some degree justifiable. Mm -hmm. To some degree justifiable. But the but the, re the, the 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 practical realities are you don't live in a bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, you suppose for the sake of discussion you wanted somebody just to make something for you, just you know saw it up piece of wood. Uh -huh. Well, then they know they know about the size of that wood, don't they? Yeah. There's no way around that. Mm -hmm. What a, now? Not to step on any of your advertisers' toes, you might want to watch what you say so you don't uh, lose a sponsor. It doesn't but... matter. I, I when was I ever did that ever did that when was that ever a consideration? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it was coincidental, just as uh, this thought uh, came into mind, I tried calling last night and didn't get through, but I heard uh, one of your sponsors was a place soliciting uh, uh, ideas from inventors uh, or ideas for, for industry or, or something to that effect. What about uh, those places? I uh, would not use one, not uh -huh. under any conditions. Huh. Okay, there goes a sponsor, maybe. That may be. You asked me the question. I wouldn't use them under any conditions. That doesn't mean that they're wrong. But you ask me uh -huh. that I have never heard of a success story. I'm sure there must be one, but there there have to be many more failures I, successes. I, yeah, I kind of guess that they were probably just uh, selling some standard forms. That well, the, fir the first thing you'll get is, 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 you, when you, is kind of a, of a kit. The next thing you'll get is that give us some information what you're going to give them. Then they'll come back and want several hundred bucks, and then they'll come back and want several thousand. Mm -hmm. And I'm just not interested in that. And you, so far as you're aware, they've never been successful in helping. I know. Wait a minute. Don't put, don't put words in my mouth. Uh huh. You said never. I would never use the word never. I mean, so far as you're aware. I would not even say that. Mm hmm. And yeah, that's a fair statement. I am not aware of any, but that doesn't mean anything because I haven't spent a great deal of time, or have never requested the success stories. But I'm prepared to to make a statement that I think that I can defend is that the uh, those companies uh, have legions of failures yeah well of course there's uh, legions of failures that may may not be so much attributable to them as to the uh, the, the quality of the idea uh, but the, yeah but the but but the problem with your your scenario I've got to turn you loose is that they encourage people with at least they put themselves forward as experts and say mm -hmm. yes your idea has merit mm -hmm. well, if the idea has no merit uh, I think somebody's got to say so and people frequently call me I mean we had a guy call Oh, yeah, he patented his idea. Okay, maybe he's going to be a be a winner. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. he, he started out with Bruce. How many times have you ever driven down a highway you wanted to brush your teeth? And I'm thinking I've been driving for a number of years. I don't ever recall racing down the highway with one thought in mind: Lord, if I could only brush my teeth, you know, but the traffic won't permit it. He said, "Well, you haven't thought about it because I'm sure you have." And he said, "I've got the solution. I've invented a toothbrush that clips on the end of your tongue." Mm -hmm. Well, I, he thought that was the best thing since ice cream, man. And he he put his money where his mouth had spent four thousand five grand patenting it. Okay. Now, you know, I still haven't seen him on the shelves, and I, and, I, and I'm really not looking for him on the shelves. The point is that uh, you can't keep your idea a secret. That's what it comes down to. 
and you're going to have to spend some money. If you really think you got something, your first stop should be at least a consultation, which will cost you money with a patent attorney. I do wish you well. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Oh, oh, now I've got I've got to be very polite to these folks, Lowell, Massachusetts. Hello there. Hello, Bruce. Yeah, Thank you for taking my call. Oh, isn't, isn't Lowell worthy? Isn't that the Cabots and the Lodges and that crowd? It sure is. Oh, my. do I have to stand up as I talk to you, or is it okay if I stay seated? A little nod would be fine. A nod. You have the nod. Be great. All right. What's on your mind? Uh, Bruce, I wanted to discuss with you the situation wherein my son is... Um, Starting up his own subcontracting business. What kind of a subcontracting business? Uh, he is uh, going out on jobs when the builders are finished to do the final preparation in terms of the uh, window cleaning, uh, whatever. Um, window cleaning? Window cleaning, removing the stickers, the, the that final preparation to present the, the um, product to the customer. Well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm confused. <laughs> These are window installers, you mean? No, not window installing. Like build, they build a new After home. After the builders have painted, uh, they have to have a crew come in. To you mean a brand new, them. a brand new home? You mean? Right. And they and he's doing the just the windows, or is he cleaning the house as well, or what? Yeah, well, no. As far as I know, it's the whole thing. It will what be whole the thing? final sweeping. The okay, job. kind of a janitorial service for. So for for new developers, all right. As far as I can tell, that sounds like it. Okay. How old is this kid? He's in his early 20s. All right. He's an adult. Go ahead. Okay. Now, he lives in an apartment across town. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not zoned commercial, and when he went to the town hall to get his subcontractor's license, mm -hmm. he found out that in order to run a business from his home, he has to have a commercially zoned address. Mm -hmm. I live in an area that is acceptable to the town as commercially zoned. How lucky can you be? You're right. I now, see where you're going already. The question the kid is... kid wants to use your address. You got it. Well, why not? And I just wanted to know, now he tells me he's taking out a quarter of a million dollar insurance um, for liability. Mm -hmm. And he tells me that this is going to extend to my home... Um, well, uh, let me ask this of you. Uh, in, in the course of his enterprise, mm -hmm. is anybody going to come into his place, or is he strictly a mail drop? I think it's more, you mean when he uses my address? Yeah. More or less a mail drop. I, I don't see any, any, any liability on your part. Now, That's you, what I wanted to well, hear. Well, now, wait a while. You understand, I'm, I, I can't foresee every possible li uh, liability environment. Mm -hmm. But in, the, in what, you, what you've described, I just don't, I don't see any. I'd have to listen very closely to someone else. Okay. What, if nobody comes there, it's just strictly a place where he is. But you, what you might want to do, just to kind of protect yourself, uh -huh. is be a landlord and have a lease drawn up. And you know, for a dollar a year, you allow him to use your uh, your address. And that uh -huh. that that would establish, or you don't make it more than a dollar, whatever the number is. Uh -huh. and that would establish that your relationship that you have no, you have no more responsibility for what he does in his business out on a job than uh, the landlord of a store would have in terms of the products that are sold. I see. That would just would remove you a little bit, I, I guess, if such a removal is necessary. Uh-huh. Well, in his uh, discussion with me about um, taking out the liability insurance and trying to assure me that this is going to be good for me, kind of well, raised my doubts a little. Well, I don't see how it's good for you. He's not paying anything, is he? Paying, well, in the insurance policy that he's buying, mm -hmm. Um, there is because he's listing my address for his business. Yeah. That policy is going to extend to my. Well, you've home. already got insurance anyway, don't you? Right. I should. I don't need this from him. Exactly. I don't see where there's any big bargain for you. On the other hand, I don't see any hurt either. Okay, that's what I want but, to be careful of: was the hurt issue. Well, I don't I mean that. You realize I'm not an attorney. I want to underscore that. Mm -hmm. But I, my inclination would be to have a, a lease executed between you and him. Okay. To clearly establish in advance the relationship, or maybe another way to put it, the lack of relationship between you guys with regard to the business. Okay. And strictly as landlady. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I do wish you well. My best to the Cabots and the Lodges. Thanks a lot. That's the, the Tony folks up there in, in uh, New England. What is it? How did it go, Bill? The, and Ned McMahon lives there. Oh, my goodness. Was it the Cabots only speak to the Lodges and the Lodges only speak to God? Was that the way the, the, uh, the statement went? Something in that order. Hi, Bruce Williams. Stick around for more, more TalkNet. 
Let's go now to Cincinnati, Ohio. Thank you for your patience. What's up? How you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. i got to tell you, I've been listening to you for years, and I think you probably helped me over a lot of hurdles. And one of them was buying a house, which I've done. Uh-huh. Now we've got a little neighborhood problem, I uh, think. Well, those things do crop up. Yeah. What's happening? Um, well, we live in a very mixed neighborhood. Mixed in what respect? Mixed as far as the people that live there. You know, we have older people, students, um, you know, blacks, whites, okay. the whole gamut of things. You know, right. Everything's great. Okay. Um, right up the street, we actually have two buildings. The, all the buildings on the street were there little over 100 years old row houses. Oh, my goodness, okay. And um, everybody takes a great deal of pride, which is one of the reasons that we liked it here. Mm -hmm. um, up the street, we have two houses that are essentially shells and should probably be torn down. And the problem is, you know, we've sort of tolerated it all along, and the problem is, is that somebody has, one of the owners of one of the buildings has now rented it. And the people are just like, the nuisance of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And well, how is this nuisance evidencing itself? Well, in just probably about every way you could imagine, um, noise, not not stereo playing. They essentially are running like a recycling center in their yard. A recycling center? What are they recycling? Uh, tin cans, you know, aluminum soda cans, uh, glass bottles, which they of course have to smash before they take them out. Why are they doing this? For fun and profit? Um, I assume that it's for, you know, it's for profit. They're definitely recycling them. Huh. Um, I mean, where are they coming from? They're bringing it from other places? They actually, yeah, it's, you know, it's mom and dad and little brother and little sister. And little brother and little sister have grocery carts that they run to God knows where. And they come back with heaps of garbage. And they, um, you know, they go through it. What's not recyclable, they seem to just like to throw in the yard. And accumulate, and you know it's you know it smells bad. All right, have we had a little chat with them? I haven't personally. I know that people in the neighborhood have, and they just seem to be, you know, it doesn't matter to them. This is their house that they're renting, and well, but that's not an appropriate use. I I, I have to believe. What? How is the area zoned? Strictly residential? Uh, this this street is strictly residential. Yes. All right. First, you want to do you want to check the zoning ordinance to see if they're in violation of any zoning ordinance. Secondly, if there's trash, even even the fact that they're bringing bottles in to break them up, the likelihood is that they're in violation of one or more of the health code. Okay, so that'd be the health department. You bet. Get the health officer yeah. down there. And uh, I, how about the landlord? Have you discussed this with him or with her? I haven't. And I think I, well, this is like hearsay. I know that there's like a guy on the block who's kind of in charge of the neighborhood association and stuff, and I know that he's spoken to him. And the landlord position is? That I don't exactly know. Those are things you got to know. Okay. Those okay. are things you got to know. Okay. I have one one other thing. The building that they're living in is actually it's a it's a large building, and the rear of it is is open. It's condemned to the best of my knowledge well, if it's no. condemned then they, they, that's the, now you just go talk to the code enforcement officer building inspectors tomorrow morning okay well we've we've called them call doesn't do it okay you gotta get down okay how do you realize how many calls these bureaucrats receive yeah you're right i mean they, they they've only got so many hours in a day right now who are they going to pay attention to the guy on the phone or the guy staring at the, the, the guy counter? on the phone off on the shelf you've got it exactly right Exactly right. Okay, great. Get down and see him. Okay, thanks a lot. Good luck. Bye-bye. Because you can believe that, that, that one bunch like that can really pull a neighborhood down, and there's just no excuse for tolerating it. Let's go down to the Big D. Hello there, Dallas. How you doing, Bert? I'm doing fine, thank you. Listen, uh, this isn't a real big deal or anything, but I needed some advice. Um, six weeks ago, I purchased a Jeep Cherokee Laredo, mm -hmm. kind of a yuppie station wagon nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, Anyway, uh, after five weeks of ownership, the vehicle was stolen from my company's parking lot. Well, oh, a nice. parking lot in downtown Dallas. And uh, the next day, it was found by the sheriff's department stripped. Isn't uh, that a lousy feeling? Yeah, yeah. yeah I had that uh, happen to me some years ago. I mean, they, and you feel so vulnerable and so violated and not a thing you can do about it. Well, you're working hard and somebody out there is taking your vehicle. Yeah. So, uh, and they even took the money out of the console. I can't believe they didn't leave that. <laughs> so 
anyway. You can't. No. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, um, the the, the uh, insurance company would like to go ahead and total it, which is fine. I really don't want it back uh, that so in that condition. They're going to total it. I'm surprised. Well, they 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 uh, the the people who towed it in, so they've been uh, totaling anything in that nature. Now, there's no real scratches or anything on it. The body's in perfect condition and, and so on. But uh, they're totaling it, and uh, there's some conditions now that I must meet uh, to, to go ahead and take care of this thing. And what are the conditions? Well, one is being, uh, they'll take the purchase price of the vehicle, which was seventeen six. They'll add uh, what I paid for tax, title, and license, another 1000 or so. Yeah. And from that, they will subtract my deductible, which was 250 mm -hmm. And from that, they will subtract 22 cents a mile. Now, again, it was only five weeks old. It sounds to me like they are being extremely reasonable. Is that reasonable? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, I don't want to lose any I, more than I have to. Well, you're not losing anything. Well, I'm losing 300 on well, top the, of Well, the, the 2500 you're losing, the deductible. The 250 which I understand that. Right, what else are you losing? Uh, the, the 300 plus for the 22 cents a mile. But, but you had the miles. Well, I know. If, but If you had a new car, your car had been worth that much less. Okay. Well, that's that's Actually, that's all I want to know. Should I, 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 I pull thing, over it or, or not? I wouldn't haggle too much. Now you could you could argue that yeah, but I paid for the gas for those twenty two. How many miles did you drive the thing? Uh, just probably no more than sixteen hundred. All right. You could argue that you pay for the gas. I think you're being treated well. Well, you know, it, like I say, it's not a lot of money, but if I can save it, save it. Oh, I understand that. Okay. But I mean, I, and you know, I'm not a great fan of some of the insurance companies. Right. But in this case, I think that uh, you were you're being treated quite well. Well, then I won't quibble about it. Okay, my friend. Thanks for your time. All righty. Bye bye. Well, that's a lousy feeling, though. You go out to the parking lot, and your car isn't there. I went down that road once. And, you know, they found the car. Oh, twelve hours. Certainly, a lot, but four or five hours right before it's stolen. You know. Just about everything that wasn't screwed down, a lot of things that were gone. Lousy feeling. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around for TalkNet. All righty, let's go. By golly, to Anchorage, Alaska. Thanks very much for your call. How are you doing, Bruce? All righty. We have to kind of talk a little more slowly because of this satellite. I can hear it coming now. Go ahead. Okay, I'll speak slowly. Um, you were in my place of business your last trip up here, but I missed you. I was out of town. What I'm the guy that promised you a prime rib dinner. Indeed, and you rascal, you weren't there. Yeah, I wanted to pick you on you and give you some flack, but I was out of town. Well, that's terrible. You know, I'm going to be up in your part of the world in August. I'm not sure. I, I'm going to Anchorage. Well, I'm going to be in Fairbanks, and I may just come down to Anchorage. No, no, I'm pers just just to kind of bum around a little bit. Okay, I'll check with the station here. If you're in town, I'll, I'll home, hold you that prime rib dinner. How's that? All righty. What's on your mind? We have about two minutes to spend together. Okay, I've, I've got a, uh, a um, timeshare story that uh, is unbeatable. It happened to me. We were in Honolulu, and somebody approached us with a two-for-one dinner cruise if you went to this meeting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the dinner cruises are usually a box lunch and watered down Mai Tais, which we knew. So we went to this, uh, this, this meeting of theirs, and they tried to get you one-on-one -on, -one on a desk, which we, do we dodged that. We flopped on a few Mai Tais, and I took the dinner cruise for the price of one. Then I took uh, a seat close to the bar, because it was a hosted bar all the way through, mm -hmm. and I flipped the gal 10 bucks and said, honey, we drink scotch and water. And before we got through the first boy, we were even. <laughs> and that's the way, that's the way they handle a little turkey. <laughs> and did you buy the, the head? Did you buy the timeshare? You kidding? I, when I was looking at it, I was looking at my own condo across the way. I have a condo. I didn't buy it. No, I didn't buy it. Uh, I wasn't going to buy it. I hear you. I still. I got, I got them on the cocktails. I still think the guy that called about two years ago is the, still the champ. I mean, you're in the running, but he's the champ. He goes out with his army boots on, his Glen plaid jacket with a polka dot tie, and the orange pants. And when he, as soon as he walks in, they give him his prize, put him off in a corner somewhere, and leave him completely alone. There you go. <laughs> if I had to... no competition, son of a gun, and I'm really doing good on it. Um, but this is the thing. Now the restaurant, if there's any problem or anything, you know, with a food call, food problem or anything like that, the restaurant is totally liable for it. How do you how do you come to that conclusion? Uh, this is what I've talk to, you know, an attorney. And the uh, attorney said that? Yes. 
because if there's any liability or anything on the food, because the food is all packaged up for me. I disagree with your attorney. Yeah. And if I if, if I got if I were if I'd become ill because I I had uh -huh. uh, had your food. Uh huh. Now you might get out of it, but I'd certainly name you in the suit as yeah. well. And it yeah. seems to me you would have some kind of liability insurance to cover that possibility. Yeah. Now I don't want to fly in the face of your attorney's advice. Yeah. He's on site. He's the lawyer. I am not. Yeah. But I'm telling you as a plaintiff who I'd go after, whether I'd be yeah. successful is another program. Yeah. Okay. Well, also on the other end, you know, I have drivers that I employ, and they are all required to handle their own total, own total liability insurance, you know, on their vehicles if there's any problems or anything like that. They're the ones that's liable for that. Uh -huh. right. I'd come after you, too. Yeah. You're the boss. You know, this is the thing. I've, I've explained this to insurance agents. I've thought about the very same thing, but every, I've talked about four or five of them, and they all say they can't think any reason for me to carry any insurance. Uh -huh. And, you know, I, you know, I've talked to four or five of them. Well. And that's why I thought I'd bounce it off of you see what you thought. It just seems to me that there's a... There, there, there's exposure there that I would not real be, be really comfortable with. Yeah. These guys are working for you. Uh -huh. You're the boss. The, they're your agent when they send this. When they, they're out there delivering the, the uh, egg roll and the egg drop soup, they are your agent. Yeah. Now, as your agent, uh, you have, I think, some responsibility. But, however, that's what you hire attorneys for and experts for. But I'll tell yeah. you something. If I went that you got one guy carrying your insurance and he said you don't need this and then you find out that you did, guess who gets sued? Yeah. The insurance guy. Mm -hmm. For giving you a lousy advice. Yeah. That would be an error. Yeah, because this is, a, you know, like I said, you know, I've talked to several of them, and every one of them come back and said, well, the well, restaurant handles liability of their food, your drivers handle their own liability. Well, they all say, why do I need the insurance? I'd want that in writing. Yeah. Good luck, kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks a lot. All righty. Hey, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But I'll tell you something. If I were sitting here in his socks, he's got guys scurrying around, uh, you know, delivering the groceries. He's got my my mouth salivating. I've already chosen what I'm having for dinner tonight, and you know what it's coming from. Oh yeah, the local China. I'm not coming. I'm going there. I'm I refuse to eat at this lousy console one more time. I'm going to go out and have a have a meal served at the table. But in any event, uh, it would seem to me that he is open to some exposure there. But let's face it, his attorney and his insurance guys are on, on the spot. They say, no, fine. If they're wrong, I think they're deserving of suit. That's the way I see it. You know, I, I believe in using experts. But if the expert is wrong, they stand the consequence of their action. I'm Bruce Williams. This is Talk Now. We go now to Kansas City, Missouri. Hello there. How are you? Hello, Bruce. Yes, sir. Howdy, I'm Colin. I'm a, I'm a musician, mm -hmm. and I've been fortunate to make a living playing my guitar in bars, hotels, and such. And uh, have always approached it from the the viewpoint of being an independent contractor. I contract independently with the owners of the establishments to provide entertainment, and and uh, thus, when I file my taxes, I file as self-employed. And I'm I'm just now putting together a new group, and uh, I'm curious if you have any would have any advice for me as to how I could set this business up to be a little more thrifty on the taxes. Oh, I, I, you, you, they're, they're, if you're starting a band and the and the, and the members are working for you, uh -huh. they're employees clearly, uh -huh. and you got to pay the taxes. Yeah. Now I know there are some some group set up where each guy has a piece of the action and he comes in as an independent contractor and whatever, uh, I would want to sit down with an accountant that can sit, that can tell you and look you right in your peepers and say, I can, when, when the IRS comes rapping on your door, I can go down and successfully defend you. Okay. Because they're going to. That's, that's clearly one of the things that the Internal Revenue Service is focusing upon, this independent contractor's dodge. Because uh -huh. that's what it is, a dodge. It's a way to avoid paying the proper Social Security. It's a way to avoid paying workers' compensation. It's a way to avoid paying unemployment and all the other things that the rest of us have to pay. Uh-huh. Oh, I don't know if it would be feasible to otherwise to even do it then. Why? Well, uh, working as self-employed and... Uh, You're you know, talking about 10%. Pardon me? You're talking about 10%. Uh-huh. That's what we're talking about. 7% 
uh, well, it's a little over 7.5% for, for a FICA, right? Mm-hmm. Probably a couple of points for workers' compensation, a point and a half or 2%, uh, two points for unemployment. I see. So an additional 10, 12% will say cost of doing business. Is that something that, that you think a, a person of average intelligence can handle the books? I can handle the books myself? Oh, sure. I mean, you might want an accountant to set them up for you, but after that, it's easy. Okay. For, for just a few people like that. But you just, you just can't finesse all these expenses. Uh-huh. They're part of doing business. Okay. Right, so, and look, you're going to pay, the, let's say you're going you're gonna to hire a keyboard man, right? Uh-huh. And you plan on paying him $10, right? Uh-huh. Well, you pay him 9 I see. And that other dollar goes toward the expenses we just described. I see. It's all part of, of, of pay. It's part of the cost of doing business. Okay. Good luck, kid. I sure appreciate your advice. All righty. I'm Bruce Williams. And yeah, this is TalkNet. Johnstown, PA. Hi. Hello, Bruce. Hello there. I remember Johnstown. I stayed at the YMCA there about 25 years ago. Well, you, you'll have to come back sometime. They were having some kind of a big deal parade, a uh, you know, minor league baseball team, I think, in Johnstown. Well, what Johnstown's trying to do is become the uh, all-American amateur uh, sports capital of the country. Is that what it, Well, this is, I don't know, were they, were they trying to do that then? Well, they probably were because the Triple A B A. That's that. that's what it was. Triple A ball. Yeah, the biggest event in the summer, right? Yeah, here. that was the one I could. I mean, that's why I stayed the Y. Couldn't get a hotel room. <laughs> it was terrible. The whole place was jammed up. What's on your and pretty girls riding around in convertibles? I remember it well. What's on your mind? Convertibles, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, they had a parade running right down the middle of town. Sure. And these these girls, you know, blowing kisses and the rest of it. Okay, Bruce. I I purchased a property and a family business from my parents about two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still owe approximately ten thousand to them for the purchase. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, adjacent to the building, we have a lot that we lease to the next door business for their parking needs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now they completely take care of it. There's no there's no obligation on my part to ke- have the upkeep of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife and I, with a new baby this past summer, have come into you know some some debt consideration that we want to try to relieve some of our debts, and uh, we're going to get together with the uh, people we're leasing it to next week to discuss some other options other than just a flat uh, eight hundred dollar a year leasing. How much is the property worth? <sighs> just the part that they use for parking. Well, sure, the- that's what we're talking about. Hmm. I would have to guess probably within the area of maybe six to eight thousand. Well, it's only if it's worth eight. Let's say it's worth eight thousand. Okay. They're paying you eight hundred. Right. Somewhere it's about right, isn't it? Yeah. Unless you want to sell it to them. Well, they're, they're, some of the things we discussed over the phone. First of all, were perpetual easement for it. Uh, what 20, do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, they they just uh, for the life of uh, as long as I own the building. Uh, and even beyond that, on the deed, it would say that uh, that property is to be leased to them at no charge for an upfront payment. Well, why, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> you want to retain the ownership, but you want to you want to lease it to them. Why do you want to retain the ownership? It's not necessarily that I want to retain it, other than it's a good income yearly. However, with the debts that we are currently facing, uh, it would be a better idea, I think, to go ahead and uh, get a, either a 20-year lease from them or... Uh, well, what does that do? I don't understand. Maybe I'm maybe there's something wrong here. For me, you had 20 year, what, you got 20 years in advance for me? Yes. Or even, you know, just, just parcel that piece out and sell it to them. Well, that's what I meant. Why don't you just spin it off and sell it to them be done with it? Because I don't think that would bring enough uh, to, you know, help us with the debt. How much is your debt? Well, to... to like I say, I still owe 10000 on the property itself. I To, to get seventeen five would be... Uh, to put us in pretty good condition. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I got some property that's worth a dollar. If I could get three bucks for it, I'd be in tall cotton. How can you get twice what the property's worth? Because of the value to them. Well, wait a minute. If it's, if it's either it's worth 8000 or it's not, it's worth seventeen or it's not. I see. Does that, you know, it's not what you need. That's totally immaterial. Okay. It's what that property is worth. One of their alternatives, let's start with that. Have you got them by the throat? Oh, uh, pretty much so, because they all they have is some street parking and uh, a few spots for some employee parking, and and they need. Uh, there's not a day goes by that seven to ten of their customers use that that lot. What kind of business do they have? 
Oh, it's uh, professionals like uh, there's a dentist in there, optometrist. Uh, All right, so they need the parking then. Oh, yeah. Apparently, I mean, why don't you? I mean, you see, I don't think you can walk in there and tell them, well, look, it's, it's worth 8000 but fellas, I got a new kid, I need seventeen. I mean, they're going to laugh at you. Well. But it may be worth ten, maybe worth a small premium, maybe worth twelve. If it solves some of your problems, not all of them, but some of them. And you said you owe your parents ten grand. Is that due immediately? No. Well, then what's the big rush? Well, it's the in-law thing too. The wife doesn't like to have that type of debt over her head. Well, isn't that too bad? You give her a swat in the fanny and say, "I'm sorry, sweetheart. They loaned us the money." What kind of nonsense is that? She yeah. doesn't like to have in-laws debt. How old is this girl? Thirty-six. Going on sixteen. <laughs> I mean, cut me a break. Okay, well, uh, let's put it that way. If, if if I do accept 10 for whatever type of arrangements we have, what, yeah. uh, I, I wouldn't be able to use that to pay the parents off because then I would be, I would still have the other debt. Well, but would your, first of all, you got to go back. Would your parents allow you to spit off part of the collateral to the loan? Possibly, yeah. yeah. Because they're, they're, they, you wouldn't be able to sell it. And I, I assume they hold a mortgage. Yes. Then you can't sell it without their approbation. Right. And then you have to have the mortgage rewritten uh, and then spin off that piece of property. But, I mean, are your parents giving you a lot of flack? No. They give you any flack. Has your wife got some legitimate reason to feel the way she does? Uh, I would have to say, in a way, yes. I really would. Yeah. What way? Well, because uh, there was a big deal about what the property was worth whenever we bought it. She felt that we paid more for it than it was actually worth. Well, <laughs> that may be. Did your parents finance it for you? No. Because they must have your money. Well, it, was, it was a total of like 20, 21. We paid them ten five. So well, we're, they, Then they did finance it for you. Okay. Yeah. A portion of it. You're right. I'm sorry. What kind of business is this? Uh, it's an auto repair. You know, always the wife doesn't want to. They just, I, I, I mean, you decided you wanted to pay this much money for the business. Right. And she decided it wasn't worth that much. Well, she acquiesced on it. Was she know? involved in the business? No, not then, then. Why would she have anything to say? Well, because she with she's working also, and with her burdens, you know, with, with she's she's burdening part of the the mortgage for the home, the uh, utilities. Uh, oh, I understand all that. Baby you bills. Made, you made you made a decision to buy a business. Uh huh. I assume that you, you that you you felt the business was worth what you're paying for it. Yes. See, I, 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 any more than I don't think you should tell her how to run her business. I don't think she ought to tell you how to run yours. <laughs> Okay. And then the fact that it's your in-laws or outlaws, I don't think that matters a bit. But I think you're being unrealistic to think, well, I'm going to solve my problems to get the guy next door to pay more for the property than it's worth. I see, yeah. That's just not realistic. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Now, it may be worth more to him than that $8,000. I mean, I don't know where that number came from, even. If there's no other place for his people to park, the property's worth more to him than it is to the average bear. Right. But if you walk in there and put a cannon to his head, he may buy it. But you can bet your life, every time there's a, a slightest bit of a pain emission out of that body shop where you're banging a hammer one decibel too loud, uh -huh. he's going to lean all over you, isn't he? Yeah. He'll get you. Okay, well, well, let's go with, say, like I get 10 for it. What were the tax implications for next year or this year on it? You know, like a win, that's like a windfall. No, it's on not. It. No, it's not because you bought it for 20-something and it had a value. You have to get an expert to testify what that property is worth in relation to the whole. Okay. And you may owe some tax, but that's not a big deal. I see. I do wish you well, my friend. Okay, Bruce, we'll see you back in Johnstown someday. Okay. Thanks. I don't want to see his wife, because she'll come gunning. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. Oh, we go to Phoenix, Arizona. Hello there. Welcome to TalkNet. Thank you, Bruce. I've been about three months trying to get you on this since we, you're, you're not carried here on the station anymore. And We're I'm not. I'm trying my damnedest to get um, somebody here to pick you up. But well, you work on that. What can I do for you? Okay. I have heard you mention this before, and there's a big uh, discussion on this between my husband and I about paying mortgage payments uh, before the 15th, in other words, floating the money. And he claim, he's in real estate, and he claims that this shows up at the mortgage company. He's wrong. And I heard uh, one, I won't mention his name unless you'd ask, um, a financial uh, person that goes around the country talking about financial thing. And he, I asked that question of him, and he also said that it does show up. And who, I, who is this financial guru? Charles Givens. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, I've heard of him. I think he's wrong. I... I've been paying mortgage on the 15th all my life, and I have no problem. Pick up the phone, need another mortgage. Yes, sir, Mr. Williams, what can we do for you? And they've never, it's never reflected on your credit rating? Never heard me of the slightest. Okay. 
Well, that that's enough for me. Anybody who pays the thing fo uh, early is a fool. Okay, that okay, that's my contention. Now, one other, uh, you also have mentioned casually on the. If I think I've heard you say from time to time about doing going into real estate part time, that it's maybe a good idea. No, I haven't said that. What I've said is that it's one of the businesses that lend itself a little uh, easy, more easily to part time because. Uh, a significant portion of the real estate transactions uh, in their residential areas take place on nights and weekends. Okay, I agree with that, and I know it's done here, but I just thought I would mention it's against the real estate law here in Arizona. You can't do that. Why? Well, it's just within, when you get your license, you have to agree that it's a full-time job. You, you're not supposed to. A lot of them do it. How do we how do we define full? They're telling me you cannot work at any other endeavor? That's, that's the way that it that's the way that it's written up and uh, you're not supposed to and how many guys that are selling real estate also sell insurance well i so i said i know i know it's yeah, i know i know of people that are doing it but right. it's, it's not ethical it's well not, it wouldn't distress me to bend that law no, in the slightest i wouldn't either on an indie one quick more question please mm -hmm. um on indie, my husband's an independent contractor because he works in real estate what does he do he sells new homes okay. and um According to your uh, definition of that and the mine and anything that I've read on it, he, he really isn't an independent contractor. He probably contractor. is not. Is he one of these guys that needs to be there every day? Right. So he's not an independent contractor. I know that. Legally, he's not. But he's in, in between a rock and a hard spot in that if he raises, because all of the guys here work that way. That's all terrific. women. Now, if he raised any hell now, he'd be out of a job. Not and necessarily. Not necessarily. I know a couple people that have fought it and gotten their money. I think you make a phone call, too, uh, and with the whistleblower law today, they wouldn't have a leg to stand on. Well, the only other thing is I thought that if, if he didn't do it now and wanted to protect his job, because he's getting older and be harder for him to get a job, mm -hmm. would, it, would he be able to go back on it after he left that job within right. a reasonable... But it's, that's something I don't want to speculate yeah. about. Yeah, okay, but I... Uh, the, but clearly, uh, the, the, uh, there's another employer just trying to to do a number on his employees because they got to be there. They provide, he provide, they meet, they meaning the employers provide an office space and so forth and telephones. He's, he's just not an independent contractor by any definition. I wish you well there. Tampa, hello there. Welcome to TalkNet. Hello. Hi. I'm um, thinking of buying an advertising specialty business that's been in existence for 11 years. Uh -huh. It's been a one-man operation. And how's it doing? Uh, he's grossing 100000 a year. Well, grossing doesn't tell us a whole bunch. Okay, uh, working on 40 to 50 percent net. Well, you say net, that's before expenses. So before expenses. But that's after product, but before expenses. Right. What are his expenses? Uh, he works out of his home. Yeah. Um, How does he sell this stuff? He has accounts that he calls on. Oh, well, you say, oh, I see, but he's on the, he's not in the, he doesn't do it by a telephone. He has to go out and see these people. Yes, right. He just doesn't maintain a business office. Right. Yeah, all right, go ahead. He's asking 52000 for the business. Sounds high to me. That's what I thought. I checked into assets, and it's basically uh, being a member of the association, advertising association, mm -hmm. which is a little difficult to become a member of. Is it? Why? Well, it's a thing that you have to prove to yourself that you're doing, prove to them that you're doing X amount of dollars a year to belong to it. What's the advantage in belonging to it? Uh, contact, primarily. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the wholesalers only sell to members of the association. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the assets. As far as uh, physical assets, is desk and file cabinet. <laughs> yeah, all of that, then 15 cents will buy a good chocolate milkshake. Right. Yeah. Uh, he said he would take 25000 down and finance the balance. Mm -hmm. So he says he's netting between 40 and 50 yeah, except for his gasoline expenses. Well, except for, and then they wear and tear on the car and insurance and a lot of other business expenses. Right. The thing that concerns me, of course, he's selling me accounts, which doesn't mean that they're going to be married to me. Well, is he willing to guarantee that? Well, there's no way he can. I can't say Of course there is. Of course there is. Well, if he, he, he I mean, Hold it. I'm, I'm you're saying there's no way he can, and I'm telling you there is. Uh-huh. Because if the accounts don't stick, your payments drop off. I see. That's the way it's done. I see. So something could be drawn up to that effect. Well, very, 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 without any question. Is there the, what, let's, uh, let's assume we got a nice, easy formula to play with here. Ten accounts. And let's further assume we assigned a, a value of a dollar apiece. And they must hang in for two years. Any account that leaves in the before t 24 months, your obligation to him is no longer $10, it's $9. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Uh, there, there, there's no set formula, but you can see how that can be formulated. Right. Okay, what about the value of the business? Is it worth that type of money, or how do I evaluate it? I think it's overpriced, unless you can tell me that there's a, a lot of potential. Well, there's always potential. Well, there's, yeah, there's always potential, I think, but there may or may not be. If, if the guy's out there on the street nine hours a day, right. how much potential is there? If right. he's out there two hours a day, there, there probably is some potential. Right. Okay, so I have to evaluate that. Then. See, he, he's selling you a good job. Yeah. But it's a job. Right. No more. Okay. And I think I think the 50-odd is a little high. Mm -hmm. I think somewhere around 40 would be more realistic. Okay. Um, anything you're basing that on, basically? or Yeah, because it's a full-time endeavor. Right. You see, if he's making 150, I think it may be worth 300. I see. For the same 40 hours, I'm making $150,000. But here I'm making 50, and it's a little tenuous, and we have nothing but accounts. You're selling me no hard assets. Right. Given that set of conditions, I think 40 is a generous offer. Okay. I do wish you well, Tiger. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around for more. We give you what we hope is the very best of Conversation Radio. The name? Talk that. Port Washington, Wisconsin. Hello. Yeah. Uh, recently I had a waterproofing contractor come over to my house. Oh, you got a little damp in the basement, huh, kid? Yeah. Well, I was selling my house, and a realtor suggested that I do this. Well, what, what was the problem that had to be corrected? Well, there's some with the drain tile were plugged up. I'm sorry? The drain tile? Yeah. Were clogged. So the, well, but how is that um, evidencing itself? Yeah. How? So anyway... Hold it. I ask a question. Pardon me. How was it Evidencing, were you getting water coming in the yeah, basement? Water was coming through the walls. All right, that's it's what I want to know. You got a bad basement. Go ahead. Yeah. So, anyway, I had a waterproofing contractor come over mm -hmm. and he wrote me a written estimate with a, oh, a small guarantee, but it cost me $45 for the estimate. And I showed that when selling the house to everyone that came through. Oh, you didn't have it done? No. It was uh -huh. I might escrow the money or have the work done, depending upon if the people even cared and whether we wanted to buy it. Uh, how much was the job? Six hundred and seventy dollars. That's all? Yeah. So it comes time to sell the house now and I get a hold of the guy and he says, Oh, he made a big mistake, it's fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, I'd say so. You can't you can't do any kind of waterproofing for six hundred bucks. The only thing is, you know, this is all contingent in on these people buying the house now, I, you know, I don't have any recourse against him, or I mean, because I paid forty-five dollars for the letter, you know. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I don't have an answer for you. Do you have an attorney representing you in the sale? Well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to, I guess. What do you mean no. you're going to your guest? You didn't have one now. You don't have one now. No. How come? Well, I, it was still up in the air if their financing comes through. Well, that doesn't matter. Well, okay, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I don't know if you have a claim against this guy or not. If he gave you an estimate without fee, I'd say you're out of luck. But the fact that he charged you the four bucks or the, the forty five dollars yeah. for the, the estimate may make that thing a little more binding. Now Ken, how long did he give you the estimate? And how long was it good for? Yeah. Yeah, he gave it to me like say this last summer and well then six How many how later. many months? But he told me, yeah, it was six months later, but he told me he couldn't do the work for six months because he was too busy at that time that I should give him a call six months down the road. Hmm. Well, I wish I had a better answer for you. I think that you should consider having an attorney because you're selling it. How much is this, this house selling for? Sixty-five thousand. Sixty-five grand, and that's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. You ought to have an attorney that protects you in this whole proposition. And and then you can also throw at the attorney the time, whether or not you can hold this guy to the number. I, I'm reluctant to say yes because I don't think you can. Boise, Idaho, hello. Yeah, Bruce, how you doing? Okay, what's on your mind? Well, listen, I have um, involved in a family business. Yeah, what kind of business? It's a restaurant. All right. Really kind of a series of uh, of operations. There's about six of them now. Six restaurants? That's right. Okay. And they're, and they're in different states. And uh, I guess my question, my problem is, is that... Uh, I've uh, been working with uh, in the in the family business for about ten years now, and uh, you know, in hopes that uh, someday that uh, things would trickle down. <laughs> and uh, they're not trickling, huh? Not trickling. How? Who owns the business? Well, it's it's really my mother and father. Yeah. There's uh, four of us kids involved. And you're all working there? Well, uh, yeah. You know, I, I've been involved ten years, like I say. 
my brothers have been in, oh, I would say one has been in about three years, the other about two. How old are your parents? They're 55. And what do they say? Well, they just say that uh, that it is mine. And uh, Well, you say, are, do you own stock? No. Well, it's not yours. That's right. In other words, there are no, there's the, the funds don't come into a big pot and separate it at the end of the year. And, uh, you know, I feel like I've been a big asset, you know, to the mm -hmm. company. And uh, How's the company doing? Excellent. How much do they pay you a year? They pay me uh, 28000 a year. And the company's making money? Lots of money. Well, how come they don't pay you more money? Well, they, they say that it's, it's going to, you know, I think it's the old family uh, standby that it's, that it's going to be mine. And, well, that's, uh, that's a lot of G-A-R-B-A-G-E. Yeah. From, from my perspective. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, I have some of my rugrats involved with me. Mm -hmm. They're stockholders. Yeah. So they in other words, in other words was, was it their their efforts that, that Absolute, got them the Absolutely. Or absolutely. was it the money? I mean, did they, they buy in? No, no. Buy? Well, I don't want to get a lot of detail here. Yeah. But they are, they're, but primarily I am more interested in the effort that they put into the enterprise than whatever financial contribution at the outset they could make. Yeah, well, I, I totally agree. And they, and that's pretty much what they're telling me, that, that if you need the involvement or, or want the involvement, which is, you know, obvious, they say, you know, put up, you know. With Baloney, you've been putting up for 10 years. Uh, I agree. And you're, and you're working for a relative. What do you do for the company? Very quickly. Well, I'm just I'm, I'm just a general manager. I, I maintain three stores for Could them. I hire a guy for 28 grand to do that and trust him? I, I wouldn't think. I wouldn't think. I wouldn't so. think so either. I, that's the way I put it to him. I think that your parents are are trying to be uh, a little too paternalistic. Yeah. And hold on to everything. Until, uh, I think that's wrong. Like they're making a bad management error. But then that's a family proposition. I do wish you well, my friend. They're lucky to have you and your siblings. Well, it's not easy, but give it your very, very best shot. You try and do what's right. We do it again. I'm Bruce Williams. Keep in touch. Board of Directors, I want okay. to pay you whatever you're worth. Okay. That's, I mean, it's a separate issue. The fact that you're a partner is not an issue. Okay. The fact is you're an executive. Okay. Now, you, uh, have, you have the stimulation of, of, of getting it from both ends of the loaf, but that shouldn't be a consideration in your, in your stipend, in my opinion. Right. Maybe a little vague, but not much. But, but then if you've got uh, two guys that are probably putting in twice as many hours... Doesn't matter. You hang on. We'll go around the corner. I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around. We're talking about I'm chatting with a gentleman in Chicago, Illinois. I am indeed. Now... He is uh, involved in a manufacturing operation with four partners. When you say partners, i got a feeling this must be a corporation, huh? Where do you go? Where is Chicago? There we go. Chicago, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I assume this is a corporation, huh? Yes, yes. All right. Uh, you have two active and two, a and two inactive partners, is that correct? Correct, yep. You happen to be an active partner. Yep, and right. happen to be very active, I well, guess, is what we're looking at. You know, and, and at what point... At what point do you value your... You well, well, wait a while, wait a while, wait, yeah. a while, wait a while, wait a while. We have to separate things a little bit. You're, there are four equal partners in this thing. Right. Equal, financially. Correct. Then we have the two guys who are employees. Right. Well, you're just another employee, albeit a key employee, mm -hmm. but you're just an employee. Right. Now, well, the fact that you're a dedicated employee... Well, the world is, is with a lot of dedicated employees, thanks be to God. Yeah. <laughs> right? We are. We are de very dedicated because I guess uh, if it weren't for the dedication involved here, it, it wouldn't be. Let's well, that's that probably way. true yeah. of most companies, certainly startup companies. Yeah. But that doesn't alter anything. Yeah. You are worth what you are worth as an employee. Right. Now, as an, now you're on the board of directors now. You're wearing the other hat, okay? Mm -hmm. You're still... That guy looking at you who happens to be in a mirror is worth what he is worth as a dedicated employee. No okay. less, no more. All right. Or we'll put it another way, sit in the board of directors, what would I do to keep this man? That happens to be you. But right. what would I do to keep this guy? What are my alternatives if he leaves? Because you still own 25% even if you quit. Right. That's right. That's all. But you're not, you, I don't think you deserve any real special consideration because you're, you're a point owner. No. I guess... 
at that point, I guess, um, let's put it another way, with that, with that kind of volume, with two guys basically running it, mm -hmm. uh, would you have, in your opinion, an estimation on what a couple guys that are really, nope. really, really making it should make? Nope, because the problem is volume is meaningless. Okay. What? Well, let's say we're making uh, 10 to 15 percent on that. All right, so up to four million, uh, six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Net. Front end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a uh, hundred thousand dollars put out by the partners plus a loan uh, of about a hundred seven. Well, the loan is not capital. Right. The loan is something you've that's borrowed money. Yeah. Still but paying. You, but, but without regard, <laughs> without regard to that, you you guys only have twenty five grand each on in, in jeopardy. Right. Plus your signatures, I suppose, on the loans. And everything, yeah, including our firstborn, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> what else is new? What else is new? Well, I think your salary is going to be decent, certainly. And uh, I think your partners, uh, well, I mean, see, again, you, you're not telling me where you, what you're doing with that money. I'm sure a lot of that's accounting. I don't want to get involved with that. Right. Because there's a, you could be, be have a lot, of t a lot of money but nothing to pay. Right. The money may not be there. And it might be there one year and not the next. That's another problem. So there would have, I would think that it would not be unreasonable to have some, some performance bonuses built in someplace. Yeah, there is that. And I guess that that's the bottom line. I guess we're at what point, um, up to this point, I think they've been being fair and that it's not a 50-50 split at the end of the year and mm -hmm. that they're, they're trying, to, trying to take care of it because they realize, you know, how we are. But, but, but we're the, back to the same thing, though. I think right. you're, you're looking at it slightly askew. You should be looking at it from, I'm, a, I'm on the board of directors of this organization. Right. What is a reasonable figure to pay this individual? And I understand you're wearing two hats here because the individual is you. Yep. <laughs> but nonetheless, yeah. that, that's what comes with, I mean, if you're mature enough and able enough to do what you described, it would seem to me you're able enough to do what I've described. Yep. But now let's, let's put you in, in that situation. Let's put you on that board of directors. All right. And you're making that kind of volume, Bruce. Yeah. What kind of money... What kind of salary would you? I'd have would to, I be worth to you? I'd have to know a lot more about the organization. I really would. Okay. I'd really have to know. I don't like trying to skinny around it. Yeah. I'd have to know more about it. How much can I? How much is? How much is going to stick? What am I building in terms of, of equity in the enterprise? I don't mean my 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 twenty five percent equity. How much are we increasing the value of the organization? You know, short term is the is the six hundred gram, which is not exactly right. chopped liver. Right. But the long term, particularly if you're in for the long play is how much are we increasing the worth of this organization? Yeah. Uh, what is our potential to grow? Well, the, the what, growth, can I, what can I replace that guy for? Yeah, the that, growth of the organization has been extreme, um, you know, in, 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 uh, in assets. How long have you been in business? But I guess what I'm... How long have you been in business? We've been in business for four years. Uh -huh, it's kind of respectable. Right. It's not, it's not a long term, and I guess as partners... We're we're saying well we want our salaries to be such that the that the firm is comfortable with it. All right, what are you what are you drawing in salary now? Right now, uh, I'm drawing thirty thousand. Oh, you're grossly underpaid. You're grossly underpaid. And that's that's why I'm calling. Oh, well, I think you're, I think you're grossly underpaid. I mean, two and a half, three times that amount would not be unreasonable. You know, at the end of the year, uh, if we get uh, if we get uh, fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars, we're we're pretty happy. But well, you shouldn't uh, be. You're, you're underpaid. That's what my question is. Well, my opinion, you're underpaid. I should have asked that earlier, and I apologize. Okay. I wish you well, my friend. I appreciate it, Bruce. Hang in there. I Thank hope you. you do well. Yep, bye. Hi, Bruce Williams. Stick around for more. We'll give you the best of conversation radio as we see it. This is TalkNet. All righty. You've been very patient, and I appreciate it. Colorado Springs, what's on your mind? Hi, Bruce. Hi. Really good to talk to you. Thank you. Um... Previous to my getting married, my wife got into a little trouble. Well, what kind of trouble did that rascal get involved with? Well... Remembering this is a family program. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, it's nothing to do with that. It's a problem with a lease. Ah. Uh. Um, she was living with two other girls. This was uh, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the girls um, ended up moving out a couple months before the lease was over. Just split. Well, she got pregnant. <laughs> and that's... But she still split. She split. No. Yeah, they each signed individual leases, and they went they, to... Hold it. I, I'm, you're, the, they each signed individual leases? Yeah, and that's... that's the, the, the one well, the, was, was each lease for the entire amount or one-third? No, they were each paying one-third. But that's what the lease said? 
That's exactly what the lease said, and there's, uh, the way my wife explained it to me, there was nothing in there that explained to them that if so-and-so uh, will move out, that you have to cover the rest. Well, you see, that's why I was surprised. Ordinarily, the, the, the savvy landlord wouldn't do that. They just have one lease that all three sign, then they would be jointly and severally responsible. Right. And that, well, that's what I said. Um, they said to them, they went to the landlord and said, well, look, we, here's the problem. Uh, we, we can't come up with the extra third. Will you, will you take two-thirds for the remaining couple months? And uh, he said, well, no, I want the full amount. And they said, well, we can't come up with it. And uh, so he said, well, why don't you move out? And because I need, I need people in here that can pay the full, full amount. And so they said, uh, they were kind of thinking that they were getting out of the lease, I guess. And so they moved out. And a couple months later, they started getting notices that um, they owed them for the, you know, the, the two months that they didn't. Uh, mainly my wife. My wife's been getting all the. The other two girls are. One lives in Iowa now, and the other one is married and has two kids. And I don't know. I guess my wife was the most easily accessible to find, or whatever. Well, that's the way you go. That's the guy you go after. Right. I understand that, but uh, uh, we're we're being brought into court next month, and we get a bill for like 800 bucks. He wants. And uh, he kept their deposits. Um, the, the thing that I'm not clear on is that he said when they moved out, um, just move out because I need someone else in here that can um, pay the full amount. It turns out I guess he couldn't get anybody in there. How do you prove that, first of all? How do I prove that he couldn't get anybody else in there? No, how do you prove that what you just said to me? That, that he said that. Yeah. I don't know. It's his word against ours. Exactly so. And, uh, All he's got to do is turn that a little bit. It's not even against ours; it's against your wife's. Now, if if no, you, you he, said this, he said this to the to all the girls. So if if see the the, the one was in Iowa, yeah. and I don't know. There's no chance of getting her here to Colorado. Unlikely. Um, you know, so I don't know. We're just kind of we don't. I understand that she broke the lease. But but it was like it, it, the the thing that gets me is it was like well if we get somebody else in here I won't come after you mm -hmm. or we couldn't get anybody now now he's got bills for you know like a hundred and fifty dollars for running ads in the paper oh yeah he's he went in and, uh, he's entitled he went in and, and you know fixed a bunch of stuff in the house he, I don't know he's entitled to those things okay what he tried to do is I think the legal expression is called is mitigate his losses. Right. And he, 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 and, he, and he tried to do that. He can demonstrate that by the fact that he has run ads and he has receipts to show that he has the ads and probably the tear sheets to go along with it. Oh, yeah. All right. So he, he tried. This happened like over two years ago. That's all right. When did if he, as long as he filed in the statutory period. Okay. He has well, so long, I, don't know what that, no, I don't know what that period is in your state. We were advised to subpoena in uh, the other two girls. Well, that's fine. They ignore them. They ignore the subpoena. Then what? How are you going to, how you going to subpoena somebody in uh, Iowa for Colorado? Well, it just so happens she's going to be in town like, All right, like so a couple days before before our hearing. Well, if, that's, if, if she's willing to come, fine. But what are you going to do to her? So you subpoena her for the sake of discussion. She doesn't show up. By the time you do anything, she's in another jurisdiction. Then what? Well, I'm telling you, you have no leverage with her. Better to keep her as a friend if she's willing to testify. But what is she going to testify to? That she split? That she didn't pay the bills? Well, no, you know what she's going to testify? You know what? They, this is another thing. The, the, uh, when they were trying to work a deal out, yeah. you know, they're like saying, well, he says, well, maybe we can work something out. Yeah. At first. At first he was like, okay. And then and then she's like, this is my wife's ex-roommate, girlfriend, slash, whatever. Whatever. Says, well, what do you mean? Maybe, you know, thinking like he's meaning he, she can work for him or something. And he goes, well, what do you think I mean? Well, you pr go ahead, prove that. <laughs> I mean, get I mean, serious. This is, this is I'm not saying that, we're dealing with. Well, that though. may be, maybe a first-class sleazeball. Let's not uh, let's not argue that point. That's, that doesn't mean very much. You, you come up with a story. He's gonna say, "What are you crazy, lady?" I mean, these of these, course he is. These, these women just skipped out but on it, me. They they were. Thing, you know, they should bring this up when we have our hearing. No. Well, for the, the referee or judge doesn't care about that. Well, it's, first of all, how are you going to prove it? Well, you know, it's all, here, it's all hearsay. It's okay, all here, well, you, you, let me let me ask you this. Now you're not going to like this very much, all right? Okay, lay it on me, Bruce. How do you know that he said that? 
I have no idea. Exactly. I don't have any proof at all. Exactly. But you don't even know. You don't even know if he said it. This is what my wife told me that she said. That's what, that, that's a difference. See, you only know what your wife told. Okay, like let's. Say, I'm not accusing your wife of lying. It wouldn't even matter if she was there and and said that he said that. That still wouldn't. Now matter. we got two people who have a vested interest, don't we? She's hardly a dispassionate witness, is she? Is she she has a vested interest right. in this. Exactly. Hardly dispassionate. I see. Okay, well, I mean, I, I understand your your. You, I understand that your emotion. I understand the guy's a sleaze if he said what he what you say he said. But the fact is that the, these ladies signed a lease, and the fact is you just can't walk away from the lease any more than he could have come in there two months before and said, "Well, girls, uh, I wish you could stay for the two months, but my kid just got married. Needs a place to leave. Would you leave by tomorrow morning?" And they would be screaming like a wounded bear, like a, like a you know a bear with his, with his tail in a trap. What are you talking about? We can we, we have a lease for the next two months. Isn't that true? So okay, it cuts both ways. Do you, do you think? I guess what it boils down. I to think you're going to lose. <laughs> That's not what you wanted to hear. Now, you don't think that we're, we 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 should be held for one third of what? I I, look, I don't. I have no problem paying one third of what I, I think understand. We owe. I understand what you're telling me. And that's going to depend upon what that lease actually says. Now, you see, if you remember at the very beginning of our conversation, I was a bit incredulous that a landlord with a, a modicum of intelligence would give a one-third, one-third, one-third lease. Yeah, every lease. Every, I've, every, I've, yeah, everyone like you and me together. Everybody's responsible for the whole, the whole nut. And I suspect in the lease that he brings into court bearing your wife's signature is going to say exactly that. Okay, at least I mean, we had I, it. I mean, it was like... Well, that's it. Well, you, yeah. you, 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 she doesn't have a copy? Yes, yeah, this was like two apartments and two and a half years ago. Yeah, well, that's, that's a real problem, because if he's armed and you're not, you know, well, you can say the best of my recollection. Well, Your Honor, uh, here, her recollection's a little fuzzy, and now he's discredited her on a number of points, hasn't he? Yeah, well, okay, I guess if, if we get dinged for the whole amount, we're just going to have to get the third out of the other two girls. Well, that, it seems to me that would be the, the, the easiest and least painful way to go. I mean, I don't know how honorable those women are. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a, that's gonna be a fun... Uh, that'll be a test, won't it? That'll be a fun little Yeah, I mean, I, I, you see, I'm not unsympathetic with what you, your, your point of view, but it'd be, it would be pointless for me to sit here and stroke you and say, yeah, you're right, and this, that, the other thing, and you're going to win, when, in my opinion, you're not. Yeah. Well, I've been telling my, you know, it seems like this guy's after my wife. And it's just like she's the only one that gets bombarded with. Well, why? Because she's convenient. Yeah. And, it's and, like, and the money apparently is there. That's what I keep telling her, but well, she's getting all upset. And I, and I said, yes, well, this is the way it is. You know? I got news for you. If um, Sheila decides to go out and buy something, and she goes to uh, her friend Bill Lally and says, Bill, would you sign this? You know, because they won't give me the credit. And she stops making payments, and it looks like we all know Bill is loaded. Do you don't think they're going to waste any time going after Sheila, do you? Exactly. They're going to go after the deepest pockets. It happens to be Lally's pockets in that case. In this instance, it, should, it, 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 it by all appearances, your and your wife's pockets are the deeper pockets that are available. Now, given that set of conditions, who would you go after? I I go after me too. Exactly. Nothing. Um, there's nothing, nothing. You know, it sounds like the Godfather. Nothing personal. <laughs> business. You know. Okay. One one quick little thing too. Um. Uh, let's say uh, he goes in and fixes some things yeah. after we leave yeah. and rings this bill up. Now, that's another thing. Is, uh, how, is there any ground at all to stand on and say, well, look, uh, the, how do we know the, the curtains need to reclaim? Well, first of all, you see, that it was, it was incumbent on you or your wife once again to have what's called a walkthrough before she left. Yeah. She didn't do that. Well, the landlord says, look, uh, I was available for a walk-through. They just, they, just, they just took off and left. Now, I went through the place, and my goodness gracious, they were just another thing. Yeah. What's your defense? Yeah. They, they didn't do what they should have known enough to do. It's not that a landlord is saying, let's go for a walk-through, because it's not his interest that's being protected here. It's it's the land, it's the the tenant's interest. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to keep our fingers hey. crossed and see what happens. Good luck, my friend. Appreciate it. Okay, kid, I'm Bruce Williams. Stick around. This is TalkNet. And we're off to the land of Mickey and Minnie, Orlando, Florida. Hello there. Hi, Bruce. Hello. Long-time listener. I'm delighted on WDBO. Right. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? I have a problem with a roofing company. They contracted to put shingles of fiberglass up, oh. and they put asphalt shingles. 
Hmm. Why do they, well, hold on. Why do they do that? I don't know. They, well, my mom was home, and they told her that they use asphalt now instead of the fiberglass. They don't have them anymore. There's no more fiberglass shingles? No, they said that, that the asphalt are not, they're not asphalt shingles, but that's what it says on the package. He said they don't make asphalt shingles anymore. Yeah, I can't testify to that. I don't know the answer to that. And they said they'd uh, pick up all the loose nails, drag the magnet and all that to do that. They haven't done it. And <laughs> You mean on the ground outside, you mean? Yeah. Okay. And when my mom called them, they said that the asphalt shingles are what we contracted for. Well, do you have, not... well, well back up now. Slow down. Okay. Is there a written contract kicking around somewhere, someplace? Mm-hmm. I'm looking right at it. And does it say asphalt or does it say fiber? It says fungus-resistant shingles, 3TAB GAF fiberglass. Well, that says fiberglass pretty clearly. Mm-hmm. And they said now that there's nothing they can do about it since the roof is up. Well, then, and they want their money. Well, how much are they asking for? $1,700. Well, you're telling them now. You have a contract that says fiberglass. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know what all those... Uh, the, the letters and numbers stand for that's some kind of a nomenclature. It gives you the weight and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, it says fiberglass, and then and you're, you you know def clearly, definitively, and all that kind of good stuff that the stuff on the roof is not fiberglass; it is asphalt. Is that correct? Right. We have a package that they left behind. Forget the package. Have okay. you have you gone and looked at, have you gone and looked at these things? Yes, we have. Is it fiberglass or is it asphalt? Asphalt. In that case, you write them back and say, my contract calls for asphalt, mm -hmm. and I'll be delighted to pay for you. I'm sorry, fiberglass. Right. Uh, I'll be delighted to pay you when I have a fiberglass roof on my home. Okay. Now, in the event that you can't remove it or will not remove it, well, the choices are clear. Uh, we can negotiate a different price for right. my, or we can go, I, 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 I back up, I don't want to say that. Uh, if... You are unwilling to remove and replace the uh, asphalt shingles with the proper material. Uh, if you have other suggestions, we are prepared to listen. Okay, because they tell my mom that if she does not pay them first thing in the morning, they will go and put a lien on her house. Well, so what? She's not going to sell a house tomorrow, is she? No. So what? Let them put a lien in the house. Okay. But then uh, you have to, you'll have to contact an attorney. Right. Okay. Because your your attitude, you want to make certain that they are on notice legally mm -hmm. that the reason this obligation is not being paid is because of their lack of performance. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd be more comfortable uh, if the if, if after you've clearly ascertained that that is asphalt up there, right? That uh, and there's nothing in the contract which allows a substitution of material, right? Then I think I'd be more comfortable having a letter from an attorney suggesting that. They would be, uh, that you they remove it and replace it with appropriate materials, or contact him. And when they contact him, uh, I would find out if there is a difference in price. Right. And certainly you'd want that and then some. Okay, so instead of us writing one for us, we should contact the lawyer. Yeah, let your him. lawyer write them a letter. Let okay. Your lawyer write them a letter. Okay, great. Uh, and, and and as I said, though, you you need a little ammunition. Find out if I don't know what the relative cost is between uh, asphalt. And uh, fiberglass. Fiberglass. But I want to know. Right. I do wish you well, dear. Well, thank you. Take good care. You too. Also, the relative quality and then how long it hold up and all the other good stuff that goes along with it. Because oftentimes, the material is the least expensive part of the job. Certainly, that's true of painting. When you paint a house, the cheapest part of the whole job is the paint. The most, most expensive is the labor. I'm Bruce Williams, and I'm so pleased that you're here. I am indeed. This is TalkNet. Let's go now to Flaunton, Ohio. We have oh, about two minutes to spend together. Let's do it wisely. Hi, Bruce. Hello there. Um, I'm, I've been listening to, to your show for about a year. I wish I'd been listening longer. Uh, what I'm calling about, uh, I worked for an employer here in the area mm -hmm. for a while, and there was flagrant... Uh, misuse of funds in that they use the money for themselves rather than the company. What? what? Uh, well, over the course of the time, they bought approximately 10 cars that were totally their own. I mean, they were titled in their own names, but the company made total payments on them. Um, I was the bookkeeper. 
None of this income was reported to the IRS. Um, I reported, when I left the employment there, I reported it to the IRS. And Why? Agent, pardon? Why? Well, after the years, I got this, the longer it went, the worse they got. Yeah, but did you report them because you were angry with them or because you thought it was civic duty? Both. My, the anger, I think, was probably the dominant emotion, but go ahead. Um, well, I had an agent come to the house. I even gave him check numbers. Mm. I mean, they were taking vacations. Um, I wonder, what conditions did you leave? I left on my own. You were angry? Well, they had named me treasurer of the company. Yeah. And things weren't too... Uh, copacetic along uh, tax lines, and I wasn't about to take the brunt of what they had perpetrated over the years. All right, go ahead. We only have a minute to go. Go ahead. But um, the agent came to see you. Then what? Uh, nothing's happened. How long? Has, how long has this been? Over. It was a year ago, the end of December. Mm -hmm. What do you expect to happen? Well, I expect them to at least audit the company. How do you know they haven't been audited? I've been in contact with the agent, mm. and he's telling me that possibly because of their age, there won't be anything done. What do you mean, they're old? Well, they're um, about 70, mm -hmm. but they're totally active in the business. Well, are you hoping to be rewarded for this? No, huh? no. Well, I forget it. You did your civic duty. You said that's what you wanted to do. You did your civic duty. Well, I forget about it at that point. If you're looking for the 10%, that's a different matter. But you said it was civic duty. Wish we had more time. Good hour, kids. I'm Bruce Williams. This is TalkNet. I'm Bruce Williams. Welcome. Welcome to my world. It's a special world. Welcome to TalkNet. Yes, here at TalkNet, we don't do the guest thing. No, we never let that camel get his nose under our tent. We just talk to our friends and neighbors. We do indeed. And I do hope I can count you on that first list, my friends list. And yeah, we've got a lot of good people here at WHDH, all doing their very best to give you the best of conversation radio. You know the way it grows? If folks like you share what you're listening to with a friend and neighbor. If you'd like to share a thought with me, my number is 800-TALKNET, 800-T-A-L-K-N-E-T. I'm Bruce Williams. I'm so pleased you're here. Welcome to Talk. When you bite into a big juicy peach, what memories come to mind? Summer, summer fruits from California. The first time you danced with a girl. Then... All righty, let's get this thing going. We're going to go to San Diego, California. Where are you, San Diego? Got you way up here in the corner. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good. Yes, you betcha. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? Everything is cooking. Oh, good. Um, I have a problem. Um. I worked uh, for this company for um, a year, and um, this last uh, January, I had to um, uh, go on a medical leave of absence. Yeah. May I ask for what reason? Uh, well, I had, um, guess I had been putting so much energy into it, uh, I broke out in singles. Oh, my goodness gracious. And so, um, and naturally, the, you know, the doctor kept me home. For how long? Well, for it was supposed to be for a few weeks. But what happened was, is I kept breaking out, and to this date, it hasn't stopped. Mm -hmm. Okay? So they put me on a medical leave. And when I contacted my supervisor back and um, the employment personnel, um, they told me, you know, don't worry about it. There's no problem. You'll be on a leave of absence. And I questioned, you know, uh, they said they would bring someone in temporary. And um, oh, you were a good employee, all this kind of stuff, you know. Well, as time went on, and, and I still, I had, by my doctor's excuse, I had to wait a month, go a month without breaking out before I could go back to work. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, now I'm still breaking out. After six months? After six months. Have you seen more than one doctor? I have, I'm seeing my third one now, and we're still, they're still unable to, you know, exactly put their finger on it and get it. You know, they're going to be doing a lot more tests on it. But my problem is, is you know, I can I can handle that. I, I can handle with you know, well, we have to do some more tests, and this is my third doctor, and and uh, you know, they say um, they have written a diagnosis as shingles, and they have written a diagnosis as herpes, and 
And I think that from the time I sent in my my doctor's note, which I, I kept doing to the employer, yeah. the minute they insisted on a diagnosis. Well, after a while, I mean. Right. But, and I and I told my doctor that they needed a diagnosis. He said, I said that I. So how about, they want a prognosis too, didn't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Diagnosis and prognosis. So the diagnosis, he wrote on there, reoccurrence, herpes. And the prognosis was, you know, from we were going from month to month until we could get it under control. You said it was diagnosis herpes. Herpes, mm -hmm. right. And reoccurrence herpes. Mm -hmm. so, we, so we're flying around here with shingles and herpes, which I guess they're one and the same. I don't really know. I don't know either. I never, I never heard the uh, shingles being called herpes. Oh, well, but, but, but well, that was the diagnosis. That was that. That's what was sent into the employer. Mm -hmm. From that time on, every from that time on, the, the next thing I knew, the next month I knew after I sent in my doctor's slip was, well, you've been not you're gonna you've been replaced. But that's okay. Don't worry about. It. I said, oh, am I terminated? No, no, no. You're not terminated. You know, just as soon as you get released. Then you call personnel and you tell them, okay, you're released, and then you may not get that position back, but, you know, we may have another position available. The operative word there was may, I guess. Yeah. Right. Well, it was left with me that, you know, my understanding was, well, I'm on a leave of absence, and as soon as the doctor releases me, then I go back. Mm -hmm. Well, nothing more is said about any of this. I get um, insurance papers in the mail, you know, to extend the medical uh, benefits if I want to. And I thought, well, why am I getting these? You know, I'm, I'm already covered. Yeah, but you wouldn't be if you're off the payroll. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, medical well, medical leave is not necessarily on the payroll. Exactly. I'm just now finding out, six months later, after incurring these doctor bills and things, I'm just now finding out that they took me off the payroll after the first month. Did they continue your medical insurance? No, they did not. And they didn't notify you of that? They didn't notify me of that. Well, in that anything. case, I'd be talking to the Department of Labor. I think they had a right. They could, they can let you go. And, yeah. but they But in most states, they are required to uh, allow you to pick up your medical insurance for a certain period of time, a year, year and a half, mm -hmm. at uh, your own expense. Mm -hmm. But they certainly had an obligation to tell you that the insurance was not in place. And I, I, have, a, I have a very strong suspicion that... Uh, you should be able to uh, require them to pay. I, I, I know that they're an innocent party, but I really didn't mention the name of the insurance company. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, um, I, you know, I, I, it, was, it was my understanding from the benefit package that, um, you know, if you were covered um, and, and go on your lease of absence, that you may lose your family benefits, but your benefits for that particular thing carry through. Well, that I don't know, but I, you, do you have the uh, the benefits package? Yes, that's well, what it says. You hang on to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd go down and talk to them. If they don't want to uh, reinstate your insurance retroactively, then I would be talking to the Department of Labor to see what your rights are, and you may have to... How much? How many doctor bills are... What's the aggregate total? Well, we're talking something like $600 now. Oh, well, we'll, we'll wait a while back up. I thought we were talking about important money here. Uh, that's important money. Well, it may be important, but it's not important enough to go to court for. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to go well, to court. Well, I understand that. But if you sold me, you had 35000 in doctor bills. No, that, well, okay. No, you understand where I'm coming from? Right. Your, 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 your approach is going to be different whether you like it or whether you don't. Right. Well, but see, what, the, it could come to that. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to have to go undergo a lot of tests. All right. What I would do is I've described. I go talk to them and, sit and, and determine why you were not notified. Uh, you might also want to stop in the Department of Labor in, in uh, your area and find out exactly what the state of California requires employers to do with regard to notification. I don't think there's any federal, uh, I don't think it's a federal matter, but you can determine that easily enough too. But I'd first of all talk to the, uh, someone in the, in the uh, Department of Labor office in San Diego, then go talk to your employer and find out why he or she did what they did. It may have been an oversight they can cure. It may not be. But that would be the approach. I do wish you well, dear. 
to Rochester, New York. Hello there. Welcome to TalkNet. Hi, Bruce. Hello. This is Mary. Yes, Mary. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Why not? Uh, Mary is fine. With her. Okay. Um, uh, last year, I uh, wrote a poem and sent it to a poetry contest. Mm. Uh, later on, I got an award of merit certificate. Uh-oh. Uh, this is all from the same. Well, that's why I'm calling you, Bruce. You got an award certificate, and they're going to have a big party. Well, well okay. Or a, convention, let me or a convention or something of that kind. <laughs> the next. Is that uh, true or not? Yes. Okay. The next. Uh, it's going to cost uh, about six hundred bucks to go to the convention, right? Um, something like that. Yeah, and then the then I got a golden port pop golden poet award, and now I've got the letter. Oh, a golden poet award! <laughs> Oop de doo. Well, you know, when you're a senior citizen and you're, I have seven children in college and careers, and so now I'm home with my pets. And I thought, you know, uh, I like to write poetry, and I and I paint. Mm -hmm. So that's why I sent it in. But uh, on the top of the uh, letter, there's a picture of Helen Hayes, hmm. Bob Hope, mm -hmm. Tony Randall, and Willard Scott. Well, those are all good people. The only one, only one I know is Willard Scott. The rest of them I don't know. Well, you're too young to know Helen Hayes and Bob Hope. Well, I met Bob Hope, as a matter of fact. Uh, you said you didn't know him. I don't know him. I've met a lot of people I don't know. Oh, Willard, right, Willard Scott, I happen to know. Oh, okay. Um, and I, uh, the man's jewelers are friends of ours. I thought uh -huh. I'd like to know that. Yeah, they're so, very nice people. Very nice. Well, okay. Um, in other words, uh, uh, I have been unanimously honored by the board to receive the 1989 Silver Poet Award. Mm -hmm. The presentation of your award is scheduled to take place Washington Hills in Washington, D.C., Saturday afternoon, September 2nd, at, two, at 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And that uh, these people pictured are going to be guests. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm just thrilled to have it. And my daughter works for the government across from the Supreme Court bill, and she said I could stay with her. Mm -hmm. So you think that this would be nice to frame along with my other one and forget it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bruce. Now, what, what do they want from you? Well, they, they want me to be there. That's all? Just show up? Yes. Doesn't You don't have to pay any registration? Well, Wait a minute now. Do you have to pay anything to yes. them? What do you got to pay to them? Four, $495 for me yeah. and 425 for my daughter to go with me. Now, does that include anything? Well... I can stay with her. I don't have to. Forget that. I want to know what you have to send to them. Just and, that. And what do you get for it? A banquet. <laughs> oh, that's big. What else? And the uh, honor of getting the award. And for that, I well, thought the same thing you're saying. I'll give you an award for oh. nine hundred bucks. I'll give you. I'll give you a, a gold <laughs> award for five platinum. Make it. I don't know what's next. It's a plat. Whatever. Well, they, I. You know, I listen to you. Now, how they... I'm home alone, mm -hmm. and uh, I hear other people call in, so I thought, well, I'm going to well, call I'm in. Well, I'm delighted that you called. I'm, I'm truly, and the, friend that, and the fact that you're a friend of Irv Mann's, I mean, makes me doubly pleased that you called. Okay. But uh, if all you're getting for this, forget about your staying with your daughter, it costs you $900 just to show up for the award. I mean, you ought to get a message in a hurry. Yeah. Now, I don't know how or why they're allowed to use the names that you described. Yeah, they got their pictures. They're, they're certainly all, now, maybe that these folks, oh, I can't imagine you have all four of them there. That you, You're talking about big, I mean, I don't know what Willard's charging these days, but I do know what Hope gets, and, and I don't have no idea about Helen Hayes. And who was the other one? Uh, oh, Bob uh, Hope. No, you mentioned him, and the other one was uh, um, Tony, Tony, Tony Randall. Tony Randall. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't work cheap either. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that they'd all be there, and, they, and clearly they'd be there on a fee base if they were there. I well, mean, it says during our fifth annual World Poetry Convention, so this must be the fifth year they've had it. Well, without regard oh, listen, to that. Oh, listen, I forgot to read this, Bruce. Well, what else? Our evening banquet honoring your achievement will be videotaped live for television by World Television Productions. That's right. Dress is formal. Well, and that's about it. What does that got to do with anything? Well, that's about it. I read the letter to you now. Okay, <laughs> I would... Save my money for me. Okay, Tell I went them. down to visit her last year, so I really can't. Well, you can go down to visit her this year, for crying out loud. Well, I just now wouldn't... when you've got seven, dear, I have to spread my ears around. Well, Washington's only a hop, skip, and a yodel from Rochester. Yeah, Price-wise, it isn't. Oh, take a bus. Okay, dear, well, thank you I very wish much. You I feel much better. Okay, honey. Bye-bye. Goodness gracious, the lady is going to worry about the, the call.